Drama City Productions presents. You are plugged in for the Podcast Wrestling Society, where you can get dynamic weekly pro wrestling and MMA related content. Give us a follow on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at P-O-D-W-R-E-S Society so that you can stay in the know. Faith is the place and the sky's the limit. And if you like what you hear, give us a five-star review and hit that subscribe button. Woo! 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 Now, your host, he is the one and only Troy Adams. You may lose your sanity when listening to the podcast Wrestling Society. I'm your loving leader, benevolent host, Midwest Monster, and the bearded terror, Troy Adams, and my co-hosts for today. They are fully prepared to do the job for me so that I can be kept strong on television. They are the Killian Dane and Alexander Wolf to my Eric Young. Say hey to Greg and Ramon. What up, guys? What up? What up? Can I be Nikki Cross instead? No, this is non-negotiable. And I don't lay out for anybody. Hell, you Very li- clearly killing Dane. So, oh ha ha! What? Big sweaty man. Uh, I replied to somebody uh, on Twitter this past week <laughs> with something about that. I got a lot of likes on this comment because the question was: If you were Vince McMahon and you had to sit down for a job interview with somebody, like you're interviewing them, what's the first question you would ask? And I said, you're a big guy, pal. How much do you sweat? <laughs> and I, I got... Badly, how bad Lashley was sweating? Oh, my gosh. He, he was, was like a faucet. Buckets, man. I know. I thought Brock was bad. Dude, can you, can you imagine him versus Brock? Like, that's just going to be the battle of the sweaty men. Friggin' Vince oh, McMahon is going yeah. to cross his eyes and fall backwards in his chair. Could you imagine? Could you imagine if Mike Chioda's the referee? That's what sweats buckets too. Oh my gosh, I haven't noticed that. What about that guy from APW? Imagine him as the ref. Oh my god! Oh, <laughs> that's Sparky. Was there a? Oh, uh, what is there a referee he, from he, APW? DJ, there's this. Huh? There's a referee like he blows up two minutes into every match. His face and we are not red. Man, he's beat red, and he is like gushing sweat. As a matter of fact, we'll try to get a picture next next, next week. <laughs> Wow. Uh, not only that, then they make a referee back to back matches. So he's just out there like, oh man, <laughs> that is not good. Good lord! Wow. Um, well, <laughs> on, on that note, I actually have uh, later on in the show a story that may interest the both of you uh, about a local uh, a local guy that you guys know very well. Uh, I'll get to, um, mm-hmm. but uh, let everybody know. This is the official reboot of the Podcast Wrestling Society. For those of you who have been listening for so long, thank you, and I'm glad you're still listening on. We uh, have moved from Podomatic. We have ported over to Hushka. So you may be noticing uh, that this is labeled Episode 1. That is because we are... It's the same show. We're just changing the format up a little bit, and I'll explain that in a second. But it is a we're on a brand new platform. It's no longer Podomatic uh, for you know just reasons. We wanted to change up the show. We wanted to change up the platform. Podomatic's been great to us, but you know we wanted to try something else, shake it up a little bit. And so we are now officially on Hushka, and we are still going to be on iTunes and all that good stuff. So um, you know definitely. Keep up with us there. There might be some technical issues for a couple of weeks, but I will try to make that as the transition as painless as possible. Also, instead of doing two or three episodes in a week, we are doing one episode. It will air on Wednesdays, unless, of course, uh, there is a pay-per-view. Then we'll do uh, the reviews and previews and whatnot with Kyle. Um, but... Yeah, we're going to do, we're going to cram the list, bro, and the news all into one episode. I've talked it over with Greg and Ramon. We all feel very comfortable with the format change. And uh, I thank you both for the suggestions that you have given me. And we're going to change, uh, we're, we're uh, going to shake things up. So I'm, come, I'm confident. We come up with the ideas, TJ just puts it together. Yeah. 
Yeah, you're the we're, we're the brains of the operation. You're the idea man. Yeah. So, uh, well, uh, you, you're you're the Johnny. So we're rebooting this just like Vince Russo did WCW in two thousand eight. No, 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 just Forget shut up. Forget all the previous feuds. We're gonna we're, we're gonna stripping stri- away all the belts, bro. We're st- New champions galore. We're galore. stripping the championships we're gonna have six away. Tournaments, bro. We're gonna have tournaments, bro. You gotta say it right. Tournaments. This is now. This is this is now the podcast on a pole match, bro. <laughs> Look, bro. If we could put this podcast on a pole, we would do it, bro. But you know, we're, we're working with what we got, bro. Yeah, Ramon. I don't think you were around when I was telling. Greg about this on the podcast a while ago, I guess. Bruce Pritchard was talking about, like, the three weeks in 2002 that Vince Russo worked for the WWE again. And he was talking about he came in and he got booted right away because he comes in right after WrestleMania 19. Um, and was like, so, I want to know, is Triple H and and, uh, and Chris Jericho ever worked a program together? Or no, it wasn't. Uh, no, oh, sorry, what WrestleMania was that? That it was Triple H and... It was 18. 18. Yeah, okay, it was right after WrestleMania 18. And he was like, has Triple H and uh, and, uh, Chris Jericho ever worked together? And they're like, dude, they just had a match at Mania for the world title. They just had the match (laughs) at WrestleMania. Yeah. Yeah, and then they... And then he was like, "Here's my idea, bro. We're gonna strip all the championships of the... All all the champions of the titles. We're gonna have tournaments, bro. And they're like, get the F out. (laughs) (laughs) Basically, what Bischoff ended up doing anyways. It was just so stupid. It was like they he wanted to reboot the company. You don't say. I know, but it's like you want to come in after you already did it in WCW and ruined everything. You want to do it again in WWE. We're gonna, Brilliant. We're gonna, have, we're gonna have we're gonna have tournaments for all the belts, and then at the end we're gonna swarm, bro. The belts are just gonna be hanging from poles, and first person to grab it wins. <laughs> Women's titles, tag titles, it doesn't matter, bro. Wow. Oh, my God. <laughs> this sounds it's sad how, like, he's, great. It's sad how he's not, like, yeah. He's not it's exaggerating. He's right on the money. <laughs> yeah. Mother of God. All right. Well, the new format, ladies and gents, is uh, we're going to do a chunk of news. Uh, we, we format it. You know, we start off with WWE news, unless the biggest news of the week is from elsewhere. This week it is not. So we're doing WWE news first, and then I will read my list, and then we're going to take a quick break, let you know about uh, another podcast on Drama City Productions Podcast Network. When we come back, we will do some more news, and uh, one of you, Lucky lucky Bros, is going to read your list and then we're going to take another break and so on and so forth. So that's kind of the that's, that's kind of the new format and uh just to let you so you you get your news, you get a list, news list, so on and so on. So this week the list is the top 10 sequels to res, uh, wrestling matches. So I have 10, but there were so many great ones. I actually got eight uh honorable mentions that if you guys don't mention it at the end of the podcast, I will name off my honorable mentions but i have a feeling that our our lists all three of us are probably going to be similar in some aspects but also i think they're going to contrast a lot so i'm anxious to see uh I think you're all right. I have the same number one i'm almost certain yeah i i'm 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 actually anxious to see if we all have the same number one i i don't know but it's a good possibility spoilers guys spoilers it's michael cole versus jr and Lawler with Swagger in that uh, oh, man, that's the one I had. From Extreme Rules, so I thought you were gonna say if you're, if you're still listening. That's that's gonna be my answer. I thought you were gonna say Hogan Warrior Two at Halloween Havoc. <laughs> <laughs> We're still on that archive on YouTube. Let's check it out. <laughs> or <laughs> even though this is a reboot of the podcast, I think that's been done to death. <laughs> <laughs> or uh, you, you know, you could have mentioned uh, Taker Giant Gonzalez. You know they. That was, you know, they had a great a sequel to that. Yeah, well, where was that, Greg? So, didn't, uh, didn't they have two matches, Greg? Didn't they have a rematch from what? WrestleMania? Didn't they have a? Uh, yeah, it was that SummerSlam oh. it was a rest in peace match. Yeah, there you go. And what was the goal of the rest in peace gem. match? They never was say. A, was a, what was it? A rest my eyes match. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, r- or go I rest your ass on the toilet DQ, match. Say what? I think it was just a no DQ, if I remember right. Yeah, there was like no... They... So, just to be clear, just to be clear, TJ's going to do his list first, 
And then Greg and I are going to do a New Age New Age Outlaw style rock paper scissors to determine who goes Shh. second. Okay? Wow. Well, you know, Billy Gunn always lost, so <laughs> you always yeah, know. He also, he, he, also lost, he also lost the rock paper scissors too. Wow. Oh man. <laughs> Hey, if there's any Billy Gunn fans out there, well, screw you, I guess. They're the, they're the one, they're the one Billy Gunn fan. <laughs> Mother of God. I was actually a big I Billy Gunn you, fan right? back in the day. I never knew we'd meet you. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Billy Gunn's fan. No, you know, uh, speaking of that, I'm going to I'm going to say this. On Twitter, I actually found out this week there are some diehard Jason Jordan fans. Out there. Oh yeah, I want to get into that when you get a chance. I oh my like gosh, this conversation. This is this is some money right here. Let's just I, I'm just let's get into it right now. Like uh, just before we get into the news, real quick, I got on Twitter and one idiot that always has terrible takes on things. He posted something. He he tweeted. He was like, "Man, Jason Jordan needs to come back and and have his rightful feud with Seth Rollins and you know rescue the Intercontinental Title away from Dolph Ziggler and just you know bring some legitimacy to it." And I was like, dude, Jason Jordan sucks. I was like, he's a good wrestler, but he's, I said he's a piece of plain white toast with no butter and a glass of milk on the side. He's boring. I said, and he's not over. Nobody cares about him. And he was like, and, and he, he didn't reply to me. He quoted my tweet because the guy's an idiot. He quoted my tweet and said, it's always idiots like you with podcasts that have the worst takes. And I'm like, who doesn't have this take? Hey, who doesn't have a podcast? Yeah, uh, that's another one. But I'm just like, really? <laughs> like, because, like, and there was one dude who came to his aid. It was like, oh, yeah, like, Jason Jordan is the best. I'm like, the best at what, tiddlywinks? Like, <laughs> are they using <laughs> are they are they him with Chad Gable? Yeah, Do I know. I know the difference between the two of them are. Yeah, it's like, they're, dude. They're obviously cousins, by the way. <laughs> what the hell? Yeah. The two fans might, might, take, might, take the, might take you a second to get one of their cousins. Let's see if you get it. I, I don't know. But Uncle Dave. Go on. Wow. <laughs> oh, uh, you I talking to the guys on Twitter. Yeah. Um, but yeah, ch- I, it, this took me a little bit, too, until I was typing it out on my iPhone. And for those of you that have an iPhone, you might know this. When you type a word, it'll give you an option to change it to an emoji. And I didn't think about this till now. Jason Jordan and uh, his last name and Chad Gable's first name are countries. Jordan and Chad. Oh, yeah. I'm thinking that's true. <laughs> yeah. So it's, but I was like, I was just, and I replied to somebody with that line, by the way. I was like, ladies and gentlemen, I didn't think you existed, but ladies and gentlemen, here they are, the Jason Jordan fan. <laughs> <laughs> All both of them. Yeah. And they and they quit replying to me after that, especially when I told the one I was like, dude, if you're going to reply to me, reply to me. Don't quote my tweet and act like a douche, but whatever. He so tweeted you. And uh, honestly, until you brought this conversation up, I forgot Jason Jordan was even on the roster. I know. I'm like, who even remembers this guy still exists? And then like, people keep wondering. They're like, dude, he's, he's, been gonna... cl- he's been cleared for like two months. Where is he? <laughs> they had nothing for him, bro. He's going to be a Jason Jordan on a pull match. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my God. No, they're going to have a, a custody uh, ladder match where, where uh, custody of Jason Jordan is above the ring and it's Kurt Angle versus uh, Shelton Benjamin for custody of... Jason. Or, no. or Kurt Angle versus it's Chad Gable. Kurt Angle versus Jason Jordan? No, it's... It's, it's going to be Kurt Angle versus Jason Jordan himself. And if he wins, he gets to be his own father. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> oh, my gosh. But I was like, dude, the only the only way he was ever over was as one half of, the, of American Alpha. Period. Other than that, crowd doesn't give a damn about him. But apparently, I have a terrible take because I, you know, I, I state facts. Like, dude, when, can you name one time he's gotten any reaction other than when they booed so loud to try to drown him out? Like, when he threw know. those veggies at Elias. Yeah. Oh, oh man. yeah. TV magic. Just wow. Blew me away. And we did it again. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, are you guys ready to dive into some news here? The news, bro. Oh, I'm done for the news. I'm good. I just need to get into the news. Good night, everybody. Wow. Uh, and just uh, letting you guys know, the social media is still the same. Even though we've switched providers to Hushka, uh, we, or uh, podcast hosts, I should say, not providers, uh, we are 
still uh, same Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, still at Pod Rest Society, P-O-D-W-R-E-S Society. For the new listeners, definitely go and follow us. Uh, you can get our takes on stuff. You can get, you know, breaking news. You can get our YouTube videos shared and all that. And definitely go to YouTube and search for Podcast Wrestling Society. And subscribe and like the videos, please. It's uh, very appreciated. Anyway, diving into the news, bro. Uh, WWE news here. Uh, Hulk Hogan has been reinstated to the Hall of Fame. So I don't know if we covered that last week, really. I, I think the news broke after we recorded, didn't it? Yeah, I did. Yeah, so yep. we didn't really get to cover that very much last week. But the Hulkster's back, brother. And he was backstage at Extreme Rules. Uh, Brian Alvarez of Wrestling Observer is now saying that he's heard that Hulk Hogan's Extreme Rules speech was not filmed. By that, he means Hogan apparently delivered a speech to the locker room. Uh, It was supposed to be like an apology speech for, you know, dropping the N-word, brother. And, uh, yeah. So his speech wasn't recorded? Did Hogan say that? Because if anyone knows anything about being recorded, it's not really Hogan. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I know, right? I don't think I was recorded this time, brother. I, I really swear. Dude, like, if you think about it, that's twice. Because he was... Re- I don't... Did he know he was being recorded when he was, uh, for lack of a better term, boning his best friend's wife? I don't know. No, yeah. no, he, no. That, no, that was not known either. Okay, so he was... He didn't know he was being recorded boning his best friend's wife. He didn't know he was being recorded dropping the N-word to his son while in jail. Like, it just... Ah, oh, man. Like, he really needs to, like, have somebody, like, around him at all times searching for bugs. Like, that's all I gotta say. If you can have that drug-sniffing dog, that bit shin scary. Yeah, well, yeah, that that dog was racist, too. So there you go. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I don't, <laughs> I'm leaving that alone. I don't think Hogan's racist, but it has come out that... The uh, dog is, though, for sure. Oh, well, hell yeah. That dog bit Shinsuke for no reason whatsoever. Well, I don't know. We're 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 assuming here, Ramon, that dog could have bit him because he tried to pinchasa him. And he didn't like it. So I That's don't know. That's true. So I don't know. We're uh we're assuming. But uh in the words of Shinsuke Nakamura, God bless America. So there you go. He's like I don't know about you guys, but the internet's been blowing up. They love how freaking w- extra weird he is being with the the US title, by the way. I don't know if you guys have, have yep. uh, picked up on it. I, some people love the U.S. title. I think he's in love with the U.S. title. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. And by extension, he is in love with America. So, God bless the USA, red, white, and blue. Because America. Hell, yeah. But, uh, yeah. But, uh, I, Titus o- will stand for the national anthem. Yeah. Uh, Titus O'Neil was rumored to have gotten so upset that Hogan was backstage that he picked up and left. Uh, Titus himself has said that didn't happen. So that was just, you know, people stirring crap up. But Titus himself and the New Day had all been bombarded on social media by, apparently, according to them. By why people. those four? That's weird. I don't get it. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah, weird. I wonder weird why. People ask. Uh, asking them why, you know, what their thoughts are on Hogan's speech and him coming back and whatnot. Mark Henry has apparently said the locker room's... Uh, African-American contingent was 50-50 on Hogan. The New Day and Titus have said it's not true. They said it's like more leaning towards less acceptance of Hogan being back than the other way. But they have said, I don't know, in in their statements, I I haven't saved them. I'm not going to read the whole thing. They were very long. They were, you know, well-worded. Basically, they said uh, it's not their you know, call one way or another, Hogan being back, obviously. And they said they don't really care. They feel he deserves a second chance. But at the same time, they said they don't personally want to associate with him too much. And they said that they felt his apology was rather weak because they said he didn't really apologize for saying what he said. He more or less said he was sorry he was recorded saying what he said. So I don't know. That was that was so what they said. they just nitpick. I guess. I, I just, I mean, I kind of get what they're saying because they said, well, he didn't exactly say, I'm sorry for saying what I said. He said, I'm sorry that, you know, uh, I was recorded saying it, which I get it. You know, why 
you know, I get the difference. But at the same time, I don't know. I, I don't, I don't know of any stories before this of anybody claiming that Hogan was racist, even kind of. Do you? No, oh, no, I never heard. It. I don't know any. I never, I never heard anything. Yeah, so it's like, like I don't know. I think Titus. I think Titus's point was he's willing to, you know, forgive Hogan if he does show an effort of remorse. I mean, yeah, that's I mean, what that, you, I guess to yeah, I don't know, just the black community or his community in general. Right, and I guess Kofi uh, spoke. He he released a statement on behalf of the whole New Day, and he basically said the same thing. Um, so I don't know exactly what effort they're looking for from Hogan, but I don't know. I guess we'll find out soon. Hopefully, I just hope he's going to be at SummerSlam. It's got to be a touchy subject either way. Oh yeah. Well, I hope he's going to be at SummerSlam. Some people think he's going to be booed if they bring him out, but, I mean, how how is a, you know the whole crowd going to boo Hulk Hogan? I highly doubt that. I, just, I highly doubt it. I, I doubt it as well. Well, Greg, you were, you know, you and I were in New York right after this incident, and, I mean, you can always argue not everybody heard about it, but it was very big news at that time, and I was walking around wearing a Hulkamania t-shirt, and I got compliments from black guys on the shirt. Yeah, so. I remember that one specifically in Walgreens in Times Square, and he was like, "Oh my God, love your shirt." <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Yeah. So I mean, I don't know. I it's a big deal to some people, not a big deal to others. You know, it just. I, mean, I don't think it should have been said, but. Wow. Well, you know, yeah. Let's not take things out of context. Yeah. Well, and and let's let's get something clear. I don't think any of us are defending anything he said. Like it wasn't good, but. At the same time, it also wasn't good that somebody was eavesdropping on him and recorded a private conversation. So, well, Booker T, like on his podcast, said, "You know, come on, I've all said things behind closed doors." He said he admitted himself. Yeah, he's like, "You can't hold that against someone." <laughs> Anyone knows about saying things and being around Hogan? Is Booker <laughs> oh my gosh! Yeah, oh, there was another. There was another like, time Booker back. He called him that word himself. Yeah, I was gonna say, yeah, on a live pay per view. Yep. <laughs> Uh, didn't, have they officially, because I heard that WWE originally edited that out and then unedited it, but. Oh, no, it's still on there. Oh, it's on there? Like, he actually says it on the it's network? It's on there as clear as day. Oh, oh yeah. my gosh, that's awesome. I mean, well, I don't know if it's awesome, but it's, it's hilarious. It was just, because it was funny, because he says it and you know, and you can see it in his face. He's like, crap, I messed up, because he like buries his head in his hands for a second, and then he's like, never. Well, uh, I, heard, I heard an interview with him, and he said the first thing he said was, crap, I'm fired, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> well, and then what, he said, and I quote, Hogan came up to him after and said, don't worry, but I'm a good N-word. <laughs> what the hell? Look at, look at he said, Hogan said this to him. Oh, my so gosh. he's been dumb him for years. <laughs> wow. Well, Hogan... I'm not trying to make light of it, but I'm just saying the context in which he used that word is a lot different than... Well, yeah. You know, so. Hog- hey, Hogan is the original brother, okay? So, he's big oh, brother shoot. Hogan. So, but yeah, so anyway, I, for my money, you know, 10 bucks a month, I'm hoping to see him at SummerSlam. That's all I'm saying. I, uh, I miss One more m- side note on this. I blame Brooke. You know, if he didn't have her, he wouldn't have even said the word, so whatever. Oh my gosh. Uh, I blame the fact that he was trying to get her into show business and like somebody lied yeah. to her and said, you have talent because no, you don't. Just stop. Oh, she's very talented. Uh, just not in the way she thinks. So, moving on, something less controversial here. Uh, Extreme Rules Fallout news here. Uh, I guess uh, Vince McMahon was not backstage at Extreme Rules, according to the Wrestling Observer. PW Insider says that he did communicate with people who ran the show, including Triple H and Billy Kidman, who ran Gorilla Position. That's an odd duo. Yeah, I know. I never. <laughs> the who in charge backstage. Billy Kidman is the first one that comes to my mind. Who the hell is running this show? Uh, Triple H is back there with Kidman. What? <laughs> wow, I've seen what? P- Triple H is back there. Yeah, the guy with the seven-year itch. Wow. Uh, well, you know, I've seen. I actually saw a picture today of back Gorilla position. Vince McMahon was sitting right next to uh, Road Dog at Gorilla. And I'm like, yeah. When I think of. When I think of uh, a nice duo, you know, Vince McMahon and Road Dog don't exactly pop into my head that those two would, you know, yeah. 
be well, if you're working together. Well, if you're looking for a Hardy Boy special, now available in the archives on WWE Network, uh, <laughs> you can clearly see them <laughs> too. Nice. Yeah, it's funny. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, Triple H and Billy Kidman ran Extreme Rules. How about that? All right, well. Well, according to rumor and innuendo, <laughs> they made the switch of the main event, which was originally going to open the show, I guess. Yeah, that's what I heard. See, I still think they made a bad... I, not that that was a terrible match to close a show. However, I feel that if they would have switched them last two matches, it would have been a perfect order. Because I feel with Ziggler going over... <laughs> the, one time, the one time, like, Rowan puts on a massive phrase... It's not the show closer. Yeah, I know. <laughs> well, it's not even that. It's, I, I feel that AJ and Rusev still should have gone on last, and that Iron Man should have gone on right before it. Because I, I feel that... I mean, I like the Iron Man. I really did. But I still feel that that WWE title match was s- strong enough where it could have closed okay. the show here's justifiably. What, here's what that tells me, though. That they still... Just like, technically, the IC title is the top belt on Raw. Yeah. Technically, like, that's their world title at the moment. They right. clearly care more about the Raw big title. Oh, well, yeah. Down big title. So that's why it went on last. Well, yeah, which, I don't know. AJ and Rusev put on a much better match than I honestly thought they would. Not that, it, you know, I dislike either one of them guys, but I didn't know how well they'd work together. I thought they were great. So, I don't know. I, I think Rusev so, proved that he deserves so the, to be there. So the WWE title is less than Raw's two titles? Yep. Logic, pal. I don't even, Roman doesn't even care, dude. After the first match of the night, he's just set. He's just giving them up the rest oh. of the pay-per-view. <laughs> he's absolutely right. All I cared about was the long tag titles. I did mark out, and when uh, when Curtis Axel tried to do the the flossing dance up on the stage with the belt, I was like, oh, my God, that I can die happy. <laughs> that was great. By the way, for all of you that are listening now, we're... We were recording this before Raw and SmackDown, so uh, just letting you know. But Kyle and I are, well, as of listening to this, we did attend SmackDown live in Cincinnati, and we will have a wrap-up for that. So... Are they going to Raw? Or, yeah, I'm sorry. We're going to Raw. That's it. We're going to Raw live in Cincinnati. Oh. Um, we'll we'll have a wrap-up for that and, uh, and all that. So... We'll talk more about... And uh, TJ is going to be there talking to a certain promoter who's going to be there scouting. Oh, mother of God. Don't even, br- <laughs> don't even bring it up. Why is this guy... Tuned. <laughs> so why is this guy supposedly... Let, let's just go down this rabbit hole for a second. We're talking about... For, for new listeners, we're talking about a promotion that some guy that we know believes that he is opening up called... It, well, he, does, he hasn't said a name for it. We've called it Hobo Championship Wrestling. Hobo with a B. We are not homophobic here on this show, so don't take it the wrong way. But supposedly the promoter of said promotion lives down in Florida, and the uh, the guy he's, like, clearly trolling about it lives here in Ohio, like, southwest Ohio. If this is the case, why he's is... He's TJ's best friend. Oh, yeah, shut yeah. up. No. I haven't talked this he's kid in fact. years. I haven't talked this kid in years. But anyway... Uh, Greg talks to him on a Greg talks to him on an hourly basis. Gets uh, gets live updates. Those are facts. True. <laughs> but uh, only anyway, if, only to get a certain video game knowledge. Oh my gosh! But anyway, if this if this promoter lives in Florida, and this guy that we know of lives in this area. Why doesn't the promoter, instead of flying all the way up here and paying for a ticket and blah, 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 why doesn't he just send money or buy a ticket for said guy that we know? Wouldn't that be easier? You would think. Yeah, so there you go. This promoter's loaded with cash, man. He's like a billionaire. Oh, well, yeah, and everybody's going to recognize, you know, the guy that we know because he's about to blow up in the wrestling industry. So, you know... They're, they'd let him backstage. Well, actually, no, they might not because they'd be afraid he's going to steal talent. So, <laughs> all this is Hold real, down, man. All this is real, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, real stuff that has been said. We're not when we talk about HCW. We're not making this stuff up. This is stuff that has been said, and we're repeating it because it's so stupid. <sighs> anyway, back to the real news, bro. Real news. Um. <laughs> Randy Orton. Hey, HCW is real news, but whatever. Wow. Well, Randy Orton was hidden on we'll a... We'll get into that when we get to the bigger WWE news. 
Yeah. Randy Orton was hidden on a bus until 30 minutes before his return, according to PW Insider. So apparently nobody knew he was there. As much as I love Randy Orton, this is not exactly the Hardys at WrestleMania 33. Yeah. Why? It's not, like, it's not like everyone marched for it or something. Yeah, I know. And by the way, instead of what actually happened at Extreme Rules, if they would have done at Extreme Rules what actually happened on SmackDown this past week, I think that would have been the best way. Like, not reverse, you know? Yeah. Like, what the hell? It was just stupid. I, I just, because I'm like, okay, he runs up, low blows him, knees him in the head, and I was like, okay, well, Hardy's going away for a while. Nope, Randy Orton comes out, kicks him right in the junk. I'm like... So he's not going away for a while, or is this setting up a feud for when Hardy comes back? I don't know. And then what happened on SmackDown was sick. I I never want to see well, anything like that up, again. By the way, Jeff Hardy's junk, man. It took a hell of a beating on Sunday. Oh my gosh! Right? Yeah. I hope he was wearing a cup. You ever seen an episode of Sim- you ever seen an episode of the Simpsons when Mo Man keeps getting hit in the junk with the football? <laughs> yeah. I have not seen. That's that. That's what it was like for for Jeff Hardy. Like, were, why was that the thing, too? Yeah. Like, you remember you remember the longest... going for that area. Why? I know. It's weird. Like, you remember the longest yard? You must always protect the McNuggets. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> that was just... Like, dude, lay off. Speaking of another injury, uh, according to PW Insider, I was wondering about this. Apparently, Kane's injury uh, is to his Achilles tendon. He was legitimately injured before the pay-per-view, which is why he was in the boot... It occurred on the July 10th his, SmackDown. So, no, his, Mary, his his opponent for mayor freaking took him out trying to argue some title. <laughs> what the hell? Yeah, no. You thought the, you thought the National Anthem was a controversy. Oh, this is taking a knee. Holy crap. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Good grief. The devil's favorite libertarian is <laughs> on one leg. Would you vote for this man? He once electrocuted some man's testicles on live TV. Anyway. That is three testicle comments we've gotten here on this <laughs> podcast now. Give the people so what they want, guys. pal. More and I t- haven't even brought up Naked Median yet. Oh, my God. Uh, or you just did. Billy Ryan. <laughs> Good Lord. Give the people what they want, pal. More talk about men's genitals. Anyway. Get them naked. <laughs> Swollen. Sweaty. <laughs> Moving on. Kane is not expected back on WWE TV anytime soon due to his mayoral campaign in Tennessee. So he comes in, gets hurt. Uh, that's, uh, that's November. That's November, right? Yeah. I assume. I mean, I just assume it's. Yeah. Assume it's November. Yeah, it's November. Yep. So probably not anytime before Survivor Series. No. So basically, Which we will be at by the way. No, uh, yeah, I have a talk about that coming up. Uh, something exciting about that. But uh, yeah, so Kane comes back, gets hurt. Jobs out to the to the bludgeons and he leaves. Cool, good run. <laughs> I just and he gets a new terrible looking shirt. By the way, that shirt is awful. So we got Pyro back for one night. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, and Daniel Bryan got to do it. Not even Kane. <laughs> Man, just what the hell ever. And we got uh, Doctor Shelby back for one night, and it wasn't even for them. We'll get to that, that later. Was great. Uh, the Wrestling Observer notes that... I'm always it, out for some Bailey talk, but... No, oh, yeah. Well, I know Ramon is. Uh, the re- Wrestling... Me? Oh, I don't know. Bailey? No. Like, Bailey's creep. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I want Aunt Lover is to that even. <laughs> My God. The Wrestling Observer newsletter notes that it was Kevin Dunn who made the decision to take the clock off of the Titantron during the Iron Man match at Extreme Rules. Uh, I talk- he probably touched it with his teeth every time it clicked down. <laughs> yeah. I talked with a, I talked with a, a co-worker of mine that went to that show. He said when the countdown started, it happened like that countdown, the stupid rum, like rumble countdown that the crowd was doing, that went on for a little while, and then they took the, the clock off of the screen, like the big screen, and the crowd booed, and then they noticed, hey, it's on the ticker above, so they started using that. So they took it off of that, crowd booed again, so they just started making up a countdown time. I knew it, because they started doing like the middle of the time, like 3, 2, 1, it was like 23 seconds left or whatever. Yeah. Oh, you thought it was annoying. Uh, I think there's a point where we're watching it, we're like, what are they booing for? Oh, here comes McIntyre. Yeah. Something like that. He said something like that. Well, you you remember they like... booed heavily. Well, do you remember that part um, in the match where the crowd pops like super heavy? 
uh, just like for nothing? Yeah. Apparently, it was a yeah. beach ball in the crowd. Well, of course it was. Yeah. So here's the thing. So people cry, oh, they're shoving Roman down our throats. He always closes a show. We want Rollins, blah, blah, blah. Rollins closes a show. They crap all over it. Rollins on the Rita show, but he closed it with Dolph, and also Roman lost cleanly. Yep. So Rita Man is all what? your internet darlings, and you still cried about it? Yep. It was pathetic. So, you know, uh, you, the crowd, for all their crying and whining and marking and whatever else, they just proved Vince McMahon right that Roman should close the show and Rollins and Dolph aren't worth it. So there you go. Thanks, Pittsburgh. You suck again. I knew I hated Pittsburgh for multiple wait, reasons. Wait, wait. I thought you liked Pittsburgh. Not even kind of. So that was your favorite town, bro. <laughs> no, that's... Uh, for those who might not know, he's a hardcore Browns fan, so that's like public enemy number one. Oh, yeah. Yep, I mean, yep. hell, we don't, winning, we're, not, we're not too fond of the Steelers over here. Number one. <laughs> I didn't say it. Say what? Nothing. All right, anyway. Go on. Yeah, anyway. Yeah, so Pittsburgh sucks again. My buddy said if it was annoying for us, you know, watching it on the network, he said it was beyond annoying in the crowd because they were super loud, wouldn't shut up, and he said it was super distracting for those trying to watch it. Kind of like I just throw something in there. I, I don't. I don't want to say it's just Pittsburgh. I think it's Pennsylvania fans as a whole. Yeah, that it's not whole. Fair to just say them because Philly's no better. No. Yeah, and I, you know, if we have any listeners in Pennsylvania, thank you for tuning in. Whatever, but I'm sorry, I'm about to crap all over your entire state. The whole state of Pennsylvania sucks, and I know because my family lives up on the PA border in Ohio, and I, when I go up to visit them, I go over into PA quite a bit for malls and stuff. They suck. They just freaking suck. So, uh, compared yeah, to the million people of writing Pennsylvania. <laughs> wow. Real quick, DJ, compare that to New Orleans. Uh, man, I don't know. Are you Allentown, Pennsylvania? I don't, oh, that yeah, that was you know, another hey, thing. Billy Kidman, that's a Billy Kidman, two Billy Kidman references. Wow, uh, that was so another how thing. It to Nola? Uh, well, somebody somebody online actually on on Twitter was like, because uh, they shared a story about that they're taking bidding for the or bids for the next WrestleMania um, in twenty uh, twenty twenty, and they and the person replied, we're like. Why can't they just have it in New Orleans every year? And I was like, how about no? I'm like, how about never have it in New Orleans again? That entire city sucked. I was like, yeah. me and my friend went, and we couldn't wait to leave. Like, <laughs> just, oh. oh man. That was, that was a, miserable. That was a junk place. There's... Real side, side note real quick. Uh, uh, Bourbon Street, totally overrated, just so you know. Oh, yeah. I mean, unless you really like bars. And I... I can't compare it because I don't go to a lot of bars, so I don't know how theirs compare to other bars. But, you know, there you go uh, for what it's worth. But either way, uh, Wrestling Observer Online's Brian Alvarez says that Dolph Ziggler and Seth Rollins both requested that the clock go back up on the screen for timing purposes over the last 10 minutes. From what I heard, both of them were beyond pissed off that they took the, the timer off the screen because they said it was harder for them to time out their match because of that. Which I get it. Yes, because every match always has a timer up there, and they've never been able to turn a match. <laughs> yeah, I, I get. I mean, I I get the argument, but at the same time, like you know, it's it's easier for like a match like that if you have that timer. You know what I'm saying? So I mean, um, I don't you know, know. Not to break the fourth wall, but what about the ref? Yeah, well, that I'm. They were, I'm sure, getting constant cues from the referee. So I don't know. It's just. I, I can see their frustration because the crowd just crapped all over it for no reason. It, I don't get it. We want Rollins. Then they get Rollins. You know, Screw this. They could have just completely... I'm going to assume that, you know, that Dolph, like, you know, was loved there. That's what I don't get. Oh, my gosh. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. The Cleveland boy. By the way, the fact that he had the word evil across the butt of his tights was... I, I don't know about you guys. I thought that was so stupid. Like, that's worse than putting hashtag like evil, heel. Evil. If you don't know what he is, just look at his ass. It says evil on there. Right, yeah. No, see, I, I thought it was, uh, because Kyle brought up, he was like, well, given the color scheme, I thought it was, like, evil can evil. I was like, yeah, but it's not spelled the same. Evil can evil spells his, like, I think with a Y. So. Mm. Like e. Oh. Or, yeah, no, that was it with an E. No, was a evil from New Japan. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, that's it. I don't know. It's just, like, it, it was, that was probably... 
his worst tights he's ever wore, or at least in the top three. But uh, anyway, I don't know. those old on these SummerSlam ones are pretty dumb. I don't remember those ones. What did they look like? They're like all silver and have the old thread on me logo on it. No. Yeah, I don't remember too much. Uh, moving on to the SummerSlam news here. The Observer notes that it's not confirmed that Undertaker is wrestling at SummerSlam, but there is still plenty of talk about it. I well, plans can change, bro. Yeah. Hashtag plans change. Mark Holloway is going to set himself on fire between now and SummerSlam. He's going to never be seen from again, bro. Somebody's going to climb up to the top rope, bro, set their leg on fire, and do a flying guillotine leg drop, bro. <laughs> Have you seen that video? Have you seen that that uh, that? Or if he's gonna miss, bro. <laughs> Have you seen that viral video though? Some fat dude. It was like a cage match, so it makes it even worse. This guy, this fat dude, crawls up to the top rope. The referee, who's apparently helping the guy, uh, pours lighter fluid all over this guy's leg. He sets his leg on oh fire. My God. He sets his leg on fire. Jumps off with a flying leg drop, and then realizes, oh crap, my whole leg is on fire. And he's just, like, jumping around the ring. The referee's, like, patting at it. I'm like, wow. And he's just, like, ablaze at did this he, point. Did he, did he at least stay in character and paint his opponent? No, he was, like, flipping around the ring trying to put himself out. It was really... So unprofessional. I know, right? He should have He should have went for the three count, bro. His shoulders were down. <laughs> should have no shoulder, bro. No <laughs> sell it. Then you get lit on fire. You're gone forever. My God, uh, AJ Styles is currently penciled in to face and beat Samoa Joe at SummerSlam. That's a rumor, obviously, but I mean, after I don't mind Joe winning, but oh hell yeah, dude! I want to see like them trade the belt back and forth. That would be I. I mean, I don't like hot potato with the with the title, but at the same time, I would like AJ to hold it through January though, so he can hold it in three straight calendar years. Man, that's I'm crazy. never gonna complain that. That AJ Styles is the WWE champion. No, but yeah. I would have been happy if Moose had beat him. I would have been happy if Shane had beat him, uh, and I'd be happy if Joe beat him. Hell yeah, yeah, that would be that'd be fantastic. And I think Samoa Joe, you know, would benefit um, from being the WWE champ for a while. You know, have a have a legit heel champion. That you know, if they want somebody like Brock Lesnar, that's like, oh, he's legitimate, and, it, and you know, it seems like he can just beat the crap out of anybody. It's like there you freaking go. And he does more than suplex. And he shows up every night. Exactly, yeah. Uh, but whatever, I don't know. Uh, these two, I think, it would, man, it's if you're going to... injured. Yeah. Well, these two could freaking tear the friggin' house down at SummerSlam. I'm, if that's the match, man, he, I'm super looking forward to that. I don't think so. Man. Oh, yeah. Did you... Not enough, not enough super kicks for me, bro. Wow. <laughs> Did you guys happen to watch, because I just watched it the other day, uh, did you guys happen to watch that Something Else to Wrestle With about on the WWE Network about AJ and TNA? Yeah, not yet. Okay, well, there was one so, part, Bruce Pritchard said when he first went to uh, TNA, he said the rap he was getting from uh, on AJ Styles, uh, especially from Vince Russo, was AJ's hard to work with, he doesn't like to take suggestions, He's he's not working with us, and what he found out was, no, he's not not working with you. He doesn't want to be mini Ric Flair. So they said oh, that. Oh yeah. They said that's why they had him drop the title uh, when they did because they said, oh, he's not he's not working with us. He's not taking our writing suggestions. So we're gonna have him drop the belt to somebody more cooperative. Like really? He they made AJ into a joke. Yeah. Well, like, and and even like, even Pritchard himself was saying he was like. You you want to make him into mini Ric Flair. You want him to wear these robes, first of all, that he was like, you know, Flair spent like $10,000 per robe. You're spending $200 on AJ's robes. It looks like he's cosplaying as Ric Flair. It looks stupid. <laughs> he's, I think Pritchard said that there was cosplayers that had better robes yes. than AJ Styles' robes. WWE currently sells Ric Flair robes in a box that look about as good as the ones AJ were wear, was wearing on TV. So, take that for what it's worth. And, why did AJ have to be mini Ric Flair? He didn't wrestle anything like him. He didn't look anything like him. He was AJ freaking Styles. He wasn't Ric Flair. But whatever. He got frosted tips on his hair. 
Yeah, he he came well, to I'm a compromise with him. That, GJ. Like, what was the point of that? Uh, because they felt that AJ there was, was bland. There was nothing about Ric Flair in AJ Styles' style. <laughs> well, they're the very best. Because they, they said that uh, AJ was bland and he needed more of a character to him. I'm like, why? He really didn't. But anyway, I don't know. Because, bro, yeah. TNA, TNA never recuperated from totally dropping the ball with AJ Styles. Yeah, I don't know. Well, you know, that Prince of Phenomenal run was great. They just acted like they didn't know what the hell to do with him, which is pathetic. You got the best... One of the best wrestlers in the world at the time, and, you know... No, you're right, the best. He was one of, if not the he's best. He's always been the best. I don't know. I, I, he's, he no, was in the I top two or Greg. three. Yeah, he was in the top two or three. Well, right now, I would say Greg undeniably he's the best. I've had this argument for, what, 15 years now? Yeah. It's well, AJ. Well, <laughs> we'll get to a comment about that here soon. Uh, not, not that per se, but, you know, related to that. Well, last... SummerSlam story here. Brock Lesnar is being advertised for the July 30th Raw in Miami by the American Airlines Arena. It would be his first WWE television. It would be his first television appearance since April, and he's expected to interact with his SummerSlam challenger. Obviously, this is being recorded after Raw, where we will find out his challenger, supposedly. I'm kind of hoping it's a triple threat. I know I, I always rail against multi-man matches, but I, I I think this would be a good spot for that. Well, it's going to be a fatal four-way. Braun's going to cash in and be in it. Well, yeah, I was going to say, because I was talking... That talk- would be the dumbest cash-in ever. I was talking to a, a uh, co-worker about that. I was like, you know, the best way, if they really want to put over Braun as a universal champ, have a triple threat, and then have him have Braun come out and beat down not one, not two, but three big, beefy men and win the championship, and then it look he looks like a world beater. Beefy, freaking beefy. All right, I guess I'm better than how I imagined it. Beefy, sweaty man. I figure he's just gonna come out, take a dump on all three beefy. of them, and walk out the champ. So, I mean, I, th- I think. Well, I have dump on. I hope oh. that doesn't happen. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't get me wrong. I like Bobby Lashley and Roman. Roman so. Every big show you go to where Roman's main eventing, you get, you get screwed. <laughs> Except for last year's WrestleMania, but yeah. Hell, like even one for four. Hell, even even shows you don't attend where he's in the main event, you still get let down. So, <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna get cash in on with the third time. Yeah. Yep. Um, real quick, the the comment about the uh, best in the world thing, Ramon, you texted me about this. I'd seen this earlier, and I on Twitter, and I replied to it, and then you sent that to me. Uh, where Dave Meltzer had said, the 10 best wrestlers in the world right now are all in New Japan. And I was like, AJ Styles and Seth Rollins say hello. And Finn Balor, Daniel Bryan. Yep, that's what you guys... Uh, Johnny Gargano, Tommaso Ciampa, Aleister Black. I mean, you know, it's just... And I'm not saying that all of yeah, them... Almost- I might even throw Zolf Ziggler in there, yeah. too, so what? Yeah, yeah, Almas is another one. Ziggler, uh, quite possibly, depending Kevin on Owens, your taste. Yeah, maybe. But, I mean, yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. I love a lot of wrestlers in New Japan, but really, 10 out of 10 best wrestlers in the world currently wrestle in New Japan? Like, get off it, dude. Like, who are you kidding? That's pathetic. Like, I know it's all objective, or you're subjective, excuse me, and uh, up in, open to interpretation, but, like, for the love of God, it's just, it's sad at this point that he says this crap. I, I but then he'll turn Well, around. you know, I get some more hits, and get some more subscribers, so I will credit him with that. Get, He's, well, it, he it, want to get kicked out of his little friendship with the Bucks and stuff. Wow. Well, this is this is a thing with him. Uh, I I will agree with this statement. He was he's brought up before. He's like, I just state my opinions, and he was like, I think it's funny that people get so fired up over my opinions. It's like that is true. People are like taking his opinions as like it's gospel, or they get upset about it. You know, one way or another. It's like the fact that we're sitting here arguing. You know, like getting pissed off about it kind of shows. It's like, all right, well, it matters to enough people where they're but quoting this crap. He's paid to give his opinions about wrestling, though. Yeah. So he's, he's opening himself up to criticism. It's not like he's just a random guy who went up to you and said, hey, screw you and your wrestling opinions. <laughs> they pay him a lot of money to give these stupid-ass opinions. Yeah, I know. 
Uh, but yeah, so moving on from the SummerSlam news here, I guess Jeff Hardy is expected to take some time off, uh, as noted by Ticket Drew. But when is like is he is he gonna have a SummerSlam match against Orton, or are they just gonna blow that off? And Orton's be, gonna punt him in the head, and he's gonna be gone. We can't do that anymore, pal. Concussions. Oh, well, they can let him do the blackout, then they can let him punt people. I would say that too, but they told him to quit doing that even before they told Rollins to quit doing the the stomp. So I don't Please know. Stop calling it a punt, please. It's not a punch. Yeah, I know. It's, it's more kick off of anything. Yeah, it's it's more like a field goal. It's a penalty <laughs> kick. No, the penalty kick is apparently when some guy's sitting up on their rear end. I I don't know, but yeah, way. punt is only by Stritsky on babies. Oh my god! <laughs> in Madison Square Garden, the world's most famous arena. <laughs> Throw that the in there. Most famous babies. <laughs> Um, well, as of the posting of this podcast, this is in retrospect, but I kind of wanted us to talk about, you know, it'd be fun to go back, like, now that Raw's already happened, you know, go back and listen to our predictions here. Uh, Stephanie McMahon will be on Raw to make a, quote, a historic announcement. Uh, what do you guys think it is? Some people are thinking women's tag titles, other people are thinking all women's pay-per-view. What do you guys think? I think it's I think it's, I think it's Hogan, actually. Really? I would to be Stephanie then. Yeah, I was going to say, they only wheel out Stephanie for the specific women news, which is like, somebody brought up, they're like, they act like Stephanie McMahon invented women's wrestling. Like, it's kind of funny, but... <laughs> right? They're like, until Stephanie McMahon made... Their, like, when Stephanie McMahon made that announcement on Raw that they were just superstars, that, that's when women's wrestling was born by God. Like whatever. It's gonna swerve, bro. It's gonna be Baron Corbin is the is now entered into the main event of the um Universal uh, title match. Reigns and Mood match. Oh yeah, my gosh. Match. Oh man. Or the Universal title match, but yeah. Or that too, yeah. He'd be the one taking the pin. <laughs> but uh yeah. So I don't know. I'm thinking it's the tag titles. I think to answer your question though, I think it's gonna be the one in tag titles. Yeah. Yeah, we don't have enough titles, so yeah, let's have more titles, I'm bro. That if they do have to have more belts for whatever reason, uh, it's going to be co-branded. Yeah, if they're going to have women's tag titles, women. yeah, because I I think they should have like, and if they're going to do the color scheme crap, have like have either have half the belt red and half blue, or just have like one belt the center part of it blue and one belt the center part of it red. You know, just kind of like just letting you know it's like they're on both brands, pal. Or hell, bring back the penny titles and give them to the women. I don't know. So I, because there's not enough women. What do you uh, think, DJ? You didn't give an answer. Yeah, I think it's the women's tag titles. Yeah. Um, I just I, I don't think it needs. Well, and 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 another big reason I think that is because it seemed like they were like we're going with this this Bailey and Sasha feud. Finally, we're gonna pull the trigger, and then they're like, never mind. We need tag title or women's tag titles, so they're gonna be a tag team. It's like Vince did Ramon. his... Can we just get the damn match, please? It's no, them Ramon. Two. It's the Iconics. Dude. Let's just get it over with. Go on. Exactly. Yeah, it's gonna... the Iconics, too. Let's yeah. It's... Over right to the end. <laughs> Those titles are for <laughs> Bailey and Sasha, because that's that's why they're they're doing... They're they're putting them back together, so they can be the... the They like that whole feuding partners bullcrap, like with Team Hell No. So they're going to do it again, and they're, they're going to have a another facet to their feud so they can finally break up and, you know, well, they were once tag champions and best friends and now they're enemies. So they're going to keep adding to well, it. Well, no, the tagline's going to be the first tag team. Yeah, there you go. Uh, kudos to anybody, by the way, who remembers that Heath Slater and Rhino were the inaugural SmackDown Live tag team champions. Does anybody remember that? No? Just me? I do. He knew, he knew those styles. He had kids, man. Yeah, he needed that job yeah. and them belts. So he needed, first, he had kids. The first WWE tag team champions was not the world tag titles, but the WWE tag titles was what Angle and and Benoit. So oh. we don't talk about. Yeah, we don't know. Angle and Terry Saturn. Kurt Angle and himself. He was the tag team champions. Did he do that in TNA? Uh, well, in TNA, he held literally every title at the same time. So I'm not joking. Half of them on one night. <laughs> yeah, it was funny. Uh, I will say. Sure, bro. He didn't really have any of the titles. By the way, do you remember that whole controversy with uh, the something else to wrestle with, where they they had to post it late because for the WWE CW show, and they said yeah. it was creative differences. You can tell it was the Benoit thing because when they get to that that match, 
Conrad just says, uh, Johnny Nitro replaced him and blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, replaced who? Like, if you don't know what's going on, you're like, replaced who? So you can tell they cut a chunk out of uh, of the show. So Conrad, I mean, that's probably what he said in the ring. Well, you, I guarantee they were talking about it because they, they were told, well, you can say whatever you want, you know, within reason. And then WWE was like, except that. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, he should have known that. That's all you can say, brother. <laughs> you can say Hulk Hogan. You can say TNA. But you can't say Chris Benoit. That's a big no-no. Chris Benoit doesn't work for me, brother. Yeah. That doesn't work for me, brother. Are you Pegasus his kid? <laughs> no, bro. Um, an independent Can't promotion. The Wolverine? <laughs> yeah. The rabbit Wolverine. Yeah. Moving on, uh, not commenting on, uh, on all of that. Uh, an independent promotion announced that, uh, Chelsea Green, a.k.a. Laurel Van Ness, had to be pulled out of an upcoming appearance, uh, which has led to speculation that she will be in the Mae Young Classic this year, but she hasn't been announced. So, there you go. But Mia Yim's been announced, and I'm super happy. That actually leads into... She was a performance center a couple weeks ago, right? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she was. Uh, which leads to uh, my next story here. The Mae Young Classic official lineup as of now is Caitlin, Casey Cantanzaro, Io Shirai, uh, Rhea Ripley, Nicole Matthews, Ginny, Deanna Perrazzo, Tegan Knox, Jessica Alabon, uh, Reina Gonzalez, Kavita Devi. Mia Yim, Mercedes Martinez, Killer Kelly, and Crystal. So, if it's... Six... I believe Crystal was just pulled. Oh, really? Oh, only she's in. Oh, yeah. I, I just read earlier today she was in, so that, did that just happen? Yeah, that's when her name disappeared all of a sudden from the listings. Huh, weird. Like, Tony Stone's not actually officially in the tournament? No, she's not in the in the tournament. She's uh, doing the UK promotion, so she's she's oh. not in this. Well, I guess why did they take help because I thought she was in it. Nah, uh, but yeah, so if Crystal is out, then that makes there two open slots if they're doing a 16-woman tournament. So uh, there's room for Chelsea Green and one more. That is, you know, obviously... I'm going to go with uh, Keegan Knox, Mix the New World. Mm, I don't know who I'm going to go with. Uh, I mean... She has the shiniest wizard, guys. Yeah. Mercy. I wonder how far Mercedes will go this time. She went to, like, what, the semifinals last time. So, I don't know. Uh, if I had to pick, looking at this list right now, I would say Io Shirai, but that just seems like the obvious, like, you know, same thing they did last year. It so. seems too obvious. Yeah. So, that's why I hope it... I mean, I lo- I'm sure she's good and whatever, but, you know, I don't want it to be her because it's so friggin' obvious that it... But I'm sure she'll go far in the tournament. We'll have to see, but should be good. Uh, another good tournament this year. I liked it last year. Say what? It's going to be good. <laughs> wow. So, yeah, uh, but looks good. Uh, should be a, should be an entertaining tournament. Uh, here's uh, some not-so-good news here. On Dinner with the King, Jerry Lawler said that he heard Howard Finkel is in bad shape and may have suffered a stroke. Mm, no. Not the Fink, man. I hope he, uh, hope he kicks out of it. I don't know. That's, uh, that's bad. Uh, but uh, here's some uh, here's some news for you guys. This is kind of UFC slash WWE news. Former UFC heavyweight champion Kane Velasquez visited the WWE Performance Center. Ariel Helwani tweeted that he's been told Velasquez enjoyed his time at the Performance Center and is open to quote options. I hope those options are putting yeah, another he's scar. So good in wrestling. I hope those options are putting another scar on Lesnar's face. <laughs> He's ready to start doing some real competing. Dude, can you imagine, like, they're like, oh, the only way Lesnar can get his W back against Velasquez is if we work it, bro. <laughs> if we work that match, pal. Oh, man. It's a work, bro. Good grief. Well. I saw I saw a couple of pictures. One of his headlocks looked terrible, and the second headlock looked better, but I mean, it's just a still photo, but I'm just like. Yeah. I don't know, friggin' Velasquez is a huge dude. You figure, like, Vince would take one look at him and just, like, grab his, like, clutch at his heart and just faint. He's so large. What's his sweat level? Yeah. He's huge, pal. I bet he sweats buckets. He's huge. Wow. So, big league. Huge. 
Uh, here's a spoiler that's been... the best wrestlers. Wow. The uh, number one wrestler in the world. No. so big. No, they're not wrestlers, okay? They are sports entertainers. Get it right. We don't say the Mindset. W word. We don't even supposed to entertain sports. I don't know. And I thought that's what Chile is for. Yeah. Uh, well, here's uh, another. Here, this the story is a spoiler, but it's been all over Kingdom Come. So if you haven't seen it yet, you know you must not have social media. Tommaso Ciampa has won the NXT title with a little help from his good pal Johnny Wrestling. Who saw that coming? I mean, it wasn't on purpose. The video... Yeah, it was clearly on accident, but yeah. Yeah. He well, basically, Tommaso and... Uh, Tommaso is going to use the title to smack uh, Black in the head with it. Johnny gets in the ring. They start doing tug-of-war. Johnny wins, He and he yanks the belt back and accidentally smacks Black in the face, and, gets, and he gets out of the ring, and then... Uh, Tommaso hits apparently his new finishing move, which is the the angel wings. So, yeah, we get a we get a new NXT champion going into Brooklyn. How about that? I like Tommaso. Johnny Wrestling is gonna win yeah. Brooklyn. Say what? I mean, I don't think there's more any more like pure heel than Tommaso Drama right now. It seems like everyone hates him. Yeah. Oh, I know he's great. Uh, I saw one. He actually posed for a picture with a kid, which was shocking because, like, recently he hasn't been posing for any pictures. He won't talk to people. He's, like, 100% kayfabing it, which is great to see that kind of old-school mentality. But some kid on Twitter posted... Took that kid's wedding ring off of him and threw it in the crowd. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, that was crazy. I wonder if that was a working ring <laughs> or if that was his real ring. No, that was his real one. That was legit. That's the one that Candace gave to him. Yes, of course it was a working ring. <laughs> well, I don't know. I don't know, pal. Uh, last story I got from WWE. Oh, this is the story that will be interesting to you two since you guys will be there. For the second year in a row, War Games will be taking place at the NXT Los Angeles TakeOver event this November. Oh, hell yeah. Yes. So you guys will get... Do you think they're going to go with the, the same design without the roof and stuff? Or do you think... Um, traditional, anything, Greg? I don't oh, know. I think it's too easy. Oh no, no, no! Go, go ahead, Greg. I think it's too. I think it's too brutal. Well, do you think? Uh, do you think it's going to be roofless again? I think it will. I think so. Yeah, I mean, it worked out great. You know, for the, I mean, the, with the rules where it's like if you climb out, you forfeit. So you know, I thought that was cool. It was a nice little um, added layer to the match. I'm not complaining about it. Yeah. yeah, that was just asking. Yeah, because it was, I don't know, I mean, I like the old War Games matches, but the roof was so low, it's like you couldn't backdrop, you couldn't, like, Sid had a hard time powerbombing people in there, so. And the crazy spots they did last year is they definitely needed to open the more space, so. Yeah. Was. I mean, they've confirmed, the only thing they've confirmed is, you know, it's going to be double ring again, so, you know. There's lots like, uh, you know, they always take the, the next week's NXT during the takeovers. Yeah. It was weird to watch the the NXT show after and still see the double rings. Yeah, I know. But I think... And they're I, trying to sell it off like, we didn't record this before or anything. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, well... We just haven't had two weeks for no reason. <laughs> yeah, they're like, we're still in such and such. It's like, yeah, like four days later, you're still there. But yeah, the... uh yeah, I mean, next ring for no reason. The two rings, I think, adds a fun little dim added dimension for the rest of the night's matches as well. So, I like it, pal. It's, uh, I don't know. It's I, I love the War Games event. Well, Greg, Ramon, tell me this. When you guys were younger, I don't know when, uh, Ramon, when you started watching wrestling. Uh, Greg, I think you said since, what, the early 90s you've been watching? Yep. When did you start? 1999 full-time. Before that, like, you know, I'd play the games, but... Wow. Right I started watching wrestling before you. That's shocking. Yeah, I so. watched it, but I didn't like watch it religiously. Like. Right. Well, when you were younger watching wrestling, did you ever think that you'd be able to say, you know what, one of these days I'm going to be able to attend a War Games live? I no, thought that was dead and gone after WCW, yeah. I know. You better get on your hands and knees and thank Triple H. That's all I'm saying. That's uh, That's awesome. And I think... 
you know, I think wanting to pay tribute to Dusty Rhodes as well. You know, they brought it back, which is is cool. I like it. But I do too. Yeah. So that's all the WWE news that I got. Did I leave anything out that you guys wanted to touch on? I tried to, you know, leave out predictions for Raw and SmackDown since, you know, by the time this airs, it will be late. Yeah, I just want to uh, mention that Daniel Bryan has a resign, and there's a reason why, but stay tuned. Oh, my God. Stay gosh. tuned. Hashtag <laughs> stay tuned. Mother of God. That needs to be a, I'm going to make that a shirt. Hey, uh. Oh, I'll, real quick, my <laughs> prediction, a yeah. quick prediction about Daniel Bryan. If his contract ends August 31st, I think Bryan Danielson shows up at All In. Oh, man. He does that one show, and he immediately signs back to WWE. <laughs> that would be awesome. That That'd be awesome. And uh, another thing is, as of now, Rey Mysterio is still all in. I mean, they're still promoting him as being all in, and Rey has apparently publicly said he wants to be at that show, but WWE has been trying to get him locked up so that he cannot attend that show. <laughs> so we'll see who wins that. Yeah, him and Sean Lee, let's put the butts in the seats. <laughs> That's Sean, the Sean Mooney's gonna be there, man. Uh, is that? Or no, that Sean, who's Sean Mooney? I, I'm blanking here. I, I th- old school announcer. Oh, Todd Pangio. Wow. My wish. Right? Yeah, he's he was my generation's Mean Gene, which is sad, I'm but sure it's Jesus. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I don't know. We'll we'll see who wins that. I think Ray can tell them like. No, uh, hold on until, you know, I do this show. I think Ray has been around long enough where he can have that poll. Other people, maybe not, but Ray My Mysterio. My understanding is that Vince likes when guys honor their commitments. Yeah, I don't think he would want to just... Yeah, except for this one. Already signed. From what I heard, he's not <laughs> fond of this one for some reason. Like, he's really trying to lock people down so they can not work this show, from what I heard. I, I don't know why he cares that much. It's not like they're competing with him. Yeah, what's he going to do when they when they book Paul Brown Stadium? And sell it out. They're in trouble. For new listeners, that's another HCW reference. They claim they're going to sell out Paul Brown Stadium in Cincinnati, which I assume, what are we talking, like uh, April to run again, run opposition to WrestleMania? Like Probably. I mean, we'll all draw it. Yeah, well, early be, April. The alternative. For those of you that don't know, early April in Cincinnati is cold. Like, we're talking snow, baby, on the river. So, for many reasons, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Plus the fact that Paul Brown Stadium doesn't sell out for anything, ever. Like Not I, even playoffs. True I th- story. I think you could announce that Elvis was had come back to life and is making his return at Paul Brown Stadium, and people would be like, eh, I'll catch him next time. <laughs> <laughs> it's... Yeah. I heard there's an old joke about Cincinnati. He said, if the world ever ends, you want to be in Cincinnati? Because it'll be 20 years too late. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Apparently, that's Alaska, because you know they've got a blockbuster video up there. It just closed. It just closed. Oh, wow. Two really? days ago. I heard a lot. There's one that, left in all of existence, Texas. That, that sucks for them uh, up in Alaska, because from what I heard, a lot of people in that town still have dial-up internet. Like, ugh. Try watching Netflix on that. Ugh. Netflix and show more like Netflix and pull your hair out. Yeah. More like, it's like, you know what? Netflix is, is uh, not working for us tonight. Let's, uh, let's just watch the moose graze out in the yard. That's what they do up in Alaska, right? I'm just assuming. <laughs> they, could go look at, they could go look at Russia, apparently. Yeah, I can see Russia from my house. <laughs> I saw a moose one. The 16-year-old daughter got pregnant, eh? <laughs> What the hell? Oh, my God. All right, let's let's uh, let's move on. Let's do the list, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Quickly move on. Yeah. All right, I guess it's time for my top ten sequels to wrestling matches. Uh, just to clarify, this could be, you know, the second, third, fourth, fifth encounter of somebody, but it's a sequel. Number ten. I went with one that's near and dear to Greg's heart. I said, Triple H versus The Undertaker 3, Hell in a Cell, WrestleMania 28, the end of an era. Their best match ever. I thought it definitely had their mo- the most drama ever, but I liked all of their matches. That, uh, that's sweet music. I thought the streak was over for sure. 
Oh my gosh, I know. I was like, no, no! Should have been. No. Hell no. Should have been my ass. Forget you, kid. <laughs> like, nothing, in my opinion, that streak should have never been broken, ever. But, whatever. Number nine, Shawn Michaels versus Razor Ramon, ladder match two at SummerSlam 1995. I loved that ladder match, even though they, right before they go out, they're like, by the way, uh, you guys can't use the ladder as a weapon. That was that was great, but <laughs> yeah. Then it kind of goes to show the genius of Triple H when, according to them, Triple H helped them lay the whole thing out. So there you go. Uh, number eight, John Cena versus The Rock two at WrestleMania twenty nine, twice in a lifetime. I was there. <laughs> yeah, I, was there. I like how I they. Hope for the same outcome as the first one, but whatever. I like how they like scammed everybody they're like once in a lifetime this will never happen again we're like just kidding it's happening next year and next year he'll have Poor a both. goatee that would have funny if both of them grew out a goatee for the match <laughs> just like just to, <laughs> yeah that's kind of what i'm talking to the goatee that's uh that's what i want to rock like tore his abdomen right like first no he, he, the match. he tore his pec yep. like right off the like the pec muscles right off the, mm-hmm. the bone or whatever mm-hmm. it was yeah sick um number seven I said the Usos versus the New Day, Hell in a Cell from Hell in a Cell 2017. Oh man, that was one of that was one of those brutal Hell in a Cells in the modern era. Oh yeah, yeah. I thought that match was like really, like it was different. It was innovative. Uh, they did a lot of different stuff. And was that the very first ever tag team Hell in a Cell we've seen, or am I forgetting one? Oh well, I'm forgetting. It's like, well, uh, DX versus yeah. Uh, the fans. I was about to say, yeah, I forgot about that one where they shoved, was it Vince's head right into Big Show's butt? Yep. <sighs> Literally. Up the, thing about, the thing about the Deep Usos inside. and the uh, New Day, when they, when they did the spot with the kiddo sticks and they, like, tied into a bowl. Oh, man, yeah. Rainbow. Oh, super innovative. <laughs> but not the bowl. It was the, the corner of the... Yeah, they, the, yeah, they, they, yeah, they jammed him in the corner and, like, stuck... Uh, Xavier right in the corner. That was I was like, holy crap, that's awesome. Yeah, that whole match owned. The kingdom shots in that match were incredible. Yeah, they didn't hold back anything. Uh, number six, uh, friggin' Dave Meltzer's gonna like have a conniption fit about this one. If we have any New Japan fans, I they're like, why is it so low on your list? I said Kenny Omega versus Kazuchika Okada for the two out of three falls match from New Japan Pro Wrestling's Dominion 2018. No, that was not the best wrestling sequel ever. It was not a seven-star match. I don't care what anybody says. It was good. I liked it. But no. Just no. You're wrong, bro. Yeah, that... Bro, it was the greatest match ever wrestled, bro. Seven stars per wrestler. It was a 14-star match, bro. <laughs> Spam the Rainmaker. Spam Honestly, it. Honestly, I don't even... I don't even... I don't even think that's the best match of that team, but... No, it wasn't. Some I, other time. I liked it. Uh, it well, I was I kind of threw that one on there because I couldn't remember... Uh, I couldn't remember if I liked number one or number three the best. Their number their second match, uh, I think, was at Dominion 2017, and I didn't care for that one as much. Um, but number one was really good, but um, I couldn't remember if number three was the best or number four. I didn't have enough time to go back and Is that, is that the one where, like, like, Omega collapses, and then, and like, the second one they end in a draw or something? Uh, I think... Mm. I couldn't remember if two or three was the draw. I think... Yeah, I don't know, because one of them was in the... I think the, the second one was at Dominion last year, and then the third one was in the G1 last year. Yeah, that was that was the draw, was the one in the G1 uh, climax last year, because they both got points for it, or a point for it. Oh, the climax. Oh, oh of climax. course. Good Lord. <laughs> uh, number five, I said John Cena versus AJ Styles, Royal Rumble 2017. That was a great match. Oh. All of their matches were great, but I couldn't that decide. Was that was a very good match. Yeah. Number 16 for old Big Match John. Yeah. Uh, number four, I said Johnny Gargano versus Tommaso Ciampa to the Street Fright Street fight from NXT TakeOver Chicago. I mean, if you're counting the Cruiserweight Classic, then I guess uh, New Orleans was number two, but I don't count that one, and doesn't seem like anybody else does either, so 
I'm counting this as their their sequel. Only one of the greatest NXT matches matches ever. Say what? Only one of the greatest NXT matches ever. Yeah, yeah. Both of their matches were just like freaking amazing. This was, I don't know. Like, I love this match. It could have ended multiple ways, but the way it ended was was fantastic. So I loved it. And I love those two guys. Uh, number three. Oh, life forever. Yeah. Number three, I said Stone Cold versus The Rock. Three from WrestleMania 19. I, I didn't. That was great. It wasn't their best match ever, but it was great. I didn't go with 17 just because of all the shenanigans that went on, you know, towards the end of the match. But this one. Thank you, TJ. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, much. it was a great well, match. Idiots think alike, whatever. Wow. All three of them I thought were fantastic matches, but I didn't. All the shenanigan bull crap just kind of like it didn't ruin the match for me. It was a ma- an amazing match, but it was just kind of like, eh. I don't think I don't think fifteen gets the respect it deserves. No, fi- I thought fifteen was great. The that only was, the only reason that was I, just like everyone just kind of throws out away. It's either seventeen or nineteen. The only reason I didn't say because it had to be a sequel, so that's why I didn't put fifteen. So no, no, I'm not saying I'm not saying that. I just yeah. like whenever anyone talks about that that trilogy, no one ever mentions never mentions. The first one at that, that fifteen. Yeah, and I mean seventeen. I if I had, I mean I think fifteen was probably the best because that's when The Rock was coming up to be the the number two guy, and Stone Cold was just you know he just solidified himself not long, you know a year before that as the guy. So I think fifteen was fantastic. Uh, number two, I said Undertaker versus Shawn Michaels two career versus Streak from WrestleMania twenty six. Mm. That. That was okay. That was. A, I mean, I, their first match was better, but the second match was still, I think, one of the greatest WrestleMania matches of all time. So, they, I mean, it's hard to recreate what they did at 25, but they came close, in my opinion. And then number one, I said Ric Flair versus Ricky Steamboat three from Russell War Music City Showdown. Yeah. So, yeah. That was a. Yeah. I was going through a lot of the like Flair and, and Steamboats, but to not confuse myself, I didn't end up putting them on my list, but I did go through those in my head, though. Yeah, I mean, that was probably the greatest trilogy in, in history, in my opinion. You know, Flair and Steamboat is just... That's great. When it, Whenever somebody... Because the thing is, nobody's in the future. Yeah, Everybody's talking about, oh, man, you know... Okada and Omega, blah blah blah, and yeah, it's great, whatever. But nobody, in my in my opinion, in the future, people are still gonna see a series and be like, "Oh, this is the next incarnation of Flair and Steamboat." They're not gonna say it's the next incarnation of Omega and Okada. They're not gonna say that. So now, if you're gonna wa- if you're gonna watch tape on and becoming a wrestler, then you should pop in Flair and Steamboat. Many of them, really. Yeah, freaking the cardio on the cardio on those guys was just holy hell. That was crazy uh was was wrestle war um the one where flair had like the friggin harem of ladies and then steamboat had his kid and his wife coming out on a horse uh, i think so that yeah. was the one where terry funk turned on at the end too oh yeah they had a great match too it was friggin see that's an overlooked flair feud not to get off of a, t- uh, a sidebar here but that's an overlooked flair feud is him and funk they had a great feud Back in uh, WCW, I hated the way the way Flair took a pile driver though, like he was doing a handstand. <laughs> you ever notice that? Well, he did. He did have a broken back, so he was probably a little worried about it. He dropped on his head. Yeah, but I don't know. I was just like, man, you take that or, you know, ugliest pile driver. <laughs> uh, but anyway, yeah, we're gonna. Uh, that's my list, bro. When we come back, we're gonna go over news from elsewhere, and then one of y'all is going to give your top ten list. We're gonna take a break to let you know about. Rock, an- paper, scissors. Yeah, we're gonna take a break. Let you know about uh, another one, another great podcast here on the Drama City Productions Podcast Network. We'll be right back. Small Town Mentality Podcast with your host Ben, a podcast about nothing and everything. A podcast where we get together with friends, drink beer, and see where the conversation takes us. We don't edit. We don't care what people say. It's small town people with a small town mentality. It gets offensive at times, lots of swearing, and a whole lot of not caring. Available everywhere you get podcasts. 
You can find us on Twitter at STM Pod, on Instagram at STM Podcast, and on Facebook at Small Town Mentality Pod. We'll see you there. And we are back, bros. And we've got some uh, we got some news from wrestling organizations outside of WWE. Let's start with There's other wrestling organizations? I know. Well, there's there's one according to uh one Uncle Dave and his Star Factory. I thought it was just I thought it was just Uncle Vinny's Funhouse and that was about it. Oh, well, uh, there'll be another one coming soon. Yeah, it's com- in Florida. And- yeah, it's good. It's going to be based in Florida, but they're going to do most of their big shows in uh, Southwest Ohio. So like a Dayton with Destiny. Yes, ladies and yeah. gentlemen. <laughs> Yes, ladies and gentlemen, that was the name of a show that this idiot for the eight the the aforementioned Rumble HCW. The yeah. Yeah. Rubble in the Jungle will take place in Cincinnati's Paul Brown Stadium and a Dayton with Destiny will take place at the uh, the Irvin J. Nutter Center up in Dayton. That's um, yeah, that's uh, I think you just made those up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and when uh, Greg tried to inform uh, said Mark guy that, uh, you know, I think Rumble Mark in the... Guy. That's his name. His <laughs> yeah. name is Mark. Yeah, the Mark, uh, that he, uh, he was like, I think Rumble in the Jungle is, uh, trademarked, and he's like, well, we have the best lawyers, so, you know, we'll get around that. <laughs> because, you know... We you... have the best lawyers. Our lawyers are big league. Yeah, big oh, league lawyers. lawyers. They're the best... <laughs> They're the greatest. Michael Cohen has nothing on these lawyers. They're the best. Big league lawyers. Huge. My gosh. Huge. And, yeah, and then you were like, yeah, because uh, you can, I, I don't think there's a way to circumvent, uh, you know, trademark laws, you know, good lawyer or not. And uh, I think his response was, except we can. <laughs> <laughs> Because, uh, you know, that just ends the conversation right there. Except we can. Boom. I win. Oh, well then. Oh, well. Uh, I give up. Not. Yeah, <laughs> Except it's not. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, let's start with, uh, speaking of Uncle Vinny's uh, funhouse, or, or Uncle Dave's funhouse, whatever. There is, um, th- this This is the, the epitome of that. It's Impact Wrestling. Yay! Oh yeah, where dreams oh, are made. I'm gonna go to sleep tonight, guys. Wow. <laughs> the uh, well, th- this is this is where dreams go to go to be made. You are a factory of sadness. All right, this is like the dream factory here of Impact Wrestling in Toronto. Uh, oh, uh, I forgot to mention this. Apparently, Slammiversary is sold out. So, congratulations to all 500 people who were able to you know buy tickets. <laughs> Some bingo halls. From. Yeah, well, it's a Canadian it's, bingo hall, bro. It's mostly sold out because, you know, you're going to be hearing B5 yelled from the other side of the venue. So, the old late. <laughs> so, the old <laughs> ladies are going to pop the, their head around this. The, the old ladies um, are going to pop their head around this. Are going to go with the entire line of uh, this is our 16th anniversary? People say we want to last 16 minutes. Oh, my God. They crap they say every single year. Yeah, and they're going to have their phony induction ceremony into their phony Hall of Fame, and yeah, I, I don't even know who the hell it is this year. Who is it? Oh, okay. I, I, I don't know. I They just they do it every year, so I'm Tennessee assuming. I, I really hope Don Callis put an end to that. He was like, look, this is stupid. There is no Hall of Fame. Just like, let's let's end the ruse. But, yeah. Which I, former WWE guy can we put in this time? <laughs> Right, yeah, because it was so far they got Gail Kim, uh, Kurt a- Kurt Angle, I think, um, the Dudleys, the uh, Jeff Jarrett, like, good grief! I wonder if they're going to try to do a trade Jeez, for AJ team Styles. 3D, brother. Yeah, Team 3D. Did you ever hear that they were going to go? They were they were going to call themselves the Deadly Boys, but then it leaked online, and Bubba was like all butthurt about it, and he's like, "Screw it, we're not going with that name anymore." We're going to go with the Bully Boys. <laughs> That would have been awesome. Oh, uh, man. That would have been up there with Cajones. You remember when Balls Mahoney oh showed up God. and it was Cajones? <laughs> and the crowd booed. Uh, and he, like, shrugged, like, whatever. <laughs> anyway, uh, former Knockouts champion Sienna, a.k.a. Allison K., is done with Impact, according to Squared Circle Sirens. 
Her contract expired while she was out injured, and she did not re-sign. No, no. Hey, maybe she'll be the next entry into the May Young Classic. My heart is broken. Don't you like Sienna? I'm not going to lie. I have no idea what the hell we're talking about. Sienna was the one that tried to do some crap of uh, Twitter feud with uh, with Charlotte because Sienna comes out to the ring with like some... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, she's got like some feather thing that she wears. I remember her from that. Yeah. Well, for those of you that don't know who she is, she wears some like feather thing over her shoulders when she comes out and she claimed that Charlotte was ripping her off with doing that with her robes even though Charlotte's father had done that for like decades before Sienna was even thought of. And said, yeah, she said she like ripped off her eyeshadow or some crap too. Oh, no, she said she ripped off the pinky thing because they do the like the tea time pinky whatever and Sienna yeah. always puts her pinky up. I'm like, oh my gosh, like you're just like grasping at straws here trying to make yourself relevant. Whatever. I bet you think it's wrestling. Yeah. No, that's Stephanie well, McMahon. Stephanie, we covered Stephanie this. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, so yeah, she's gone from Impact. Like I said, there was there was two open spots in the May Young Classic. I never thought she was that impressive of a res- of a wrestler, but uh, I mean, whatever. Then again, I don't know. She might be she might be heading down south to Florida. You know, we don't know. Stay tuned. <laughs> yeah. You think she? You're you're gonna t- get a text, Greg? Oh, you hear Sienna's done with uh, with Impact Wrestling. Well, people think she's going to WWE, but hashtag stay tuned. <laughs> I don't think that at all, actually. <laughs> yeah. Ah, I don't know. That's uh, where the hell else is she gonna go? Like, if if she doesn't re-sign with Impact, I assume she had somewhere else. I mean, maybe she's going to do the Women of Honor. That's also a possibility. There's the there's limited places for a female to work if you don't want to go to Japan. So I don't know. Whatever. Shimmer, maybe. Yeah, because I'm sure they're shelling out the dollar dollar bills. What yeah, are the, yeah, they, they pay the they pay the bills. Well, you want to talk about drawing at a bingo hall? Like I think Impact could outdraw Shimmer, which isn't saying much, but you know, it's just saying. Didn't you guys attend a Shimmer show a couple of years ago before Mania? Yeah, that was really good. How many people were there, like, ballpark? Half of the women from the May Young Classic were on it. I'll (laughs) say not a lot of people were there, but the ones that showed up were vocal. Yeah, see, there you go. And I'm not crapping on Shimmer, because they get most of their talent poached, but I'm just saying. All right, uh, moving on to news news from elsewhere besides Impact, because that's the only story I had from Impact. Masa Saito, also known as Mr. Saito, passed away. Uh, this past week, after a long battle with Parkinson's disease, so I don't know if you guys know who that is. Really sad. Yeah, I, I honestly didn't know it was. He uh, he felt used, bad about that. Years ago, he was uh, in a tag team with it was Mr. Saito and Mr. Fuji were a tag team like back in the territory days. So yeah, there you go. But uh, apparently, he was good friends with um, Eric Bischoff. So there you go. But uh, yeah. Let's, uh, this, uh, well, I'll, I'll save this, this story I've been teasing for the end here. Uh, one more story out of, uh, Japan. Do you guys remember Hamada from, uh, TNA? Mm-hmm. Okay, well, her real name is Ayako Hamada. She has been placed under probation following her arrest for possession of methamphetamines. Hamada announced that she is officially retiring from pro wrestling due to the situation. Man. She actually said that she's going to try to, because she she's fluent in Spanish and Japanese, so she said she's going to try to pursue work as an interpreter. Yeah, like of, of all the stories that I thought would pop up about Hamada, though, it's like she's on meth? I don't know. Whatever. I. That's what she did with the millions that Dixie Carter gave her, huh? <laughs> yeah, millions. <laughs> millions of pennies that Dixie Carter paid her. But, yeah, so that was... Uh, that's uh, that's uh, kind of a crappy story, but here's a story I've been teasing that you guys might actually get uh, uh, some interest out of. Dave Meltzer said on Obser- oh, so excited. <laughs> Dave Meltzer said on Wrestling Observer Radio that Jeff Cobb has officially signed with Ring of Honor. Yeah. Oh my God! That means he is going to lose the fuck to lose the slam. Yep. Damn it! Spoiler. Oh, I'm pissed. You're pissed. Summer what do you mean? I thought you wanted Fatu to yeah. win. 
Oh, well, Hawkeye should have well, won. Well, yeah, we're going to miss it. It's going to be a SummerSlam weekend. Ah. Uh, uh, yeah, that's what... announced that's the main yeah. event. And he, lost his, for this. he lost his last title to Kratos. Ah, <laughs> uh, man. So there you go. He's waiting for this payoff. <laughs> yeah. He's going to be waiting for this payoff, and it's probably going to happen. <laughs> and we're not going to be in the seat. Yeah. Oh, man. The payoff is... He's leaving the territory. There you go. It's gonna be a great. I'm telling you, it's gonna be a great weekend for that family. Uh, well, we will. Yeah. So, <laughs> so he's gonna lose to Cobb, and then Uncle Roman's gonna lose, and get cashed in on, and then Nia Jax. Why would he get work. cashed in on if he lost? I don't understand that. No, I mean, he lose to Braun after he does win the title, and he really loses it, and then nobody will never use those or attack you anymore. So there you go. That's a great weekend. <laughs> That was, it would be funny if Jeff Cobb wins just hey, to swerve Cobb, everybody. Back to Cobb, that, that's a, it's good for Ring well, good for him. And then anything we wanted to do to bolster their rosters is also good news. Yeah, well, after we saw him pop up at the uh, G1 special, I mean, I, I thought maybe that was just, a, well, he's a local guy, whatever. But, and I mean, he does have, you know, some some name values in the indies right now, but I I didn't think well, much I of it. I was talking to I was talking to Doom, and he told me he knew all about him for years. Really? He's a, yeah, he's a Olympic athlete. For those of you that don't know, he's talking about a guy that uh, I used to talk to, and apparently you still do. Um, does out in uh, out in the Brooklyn area, bro? He's one of them Brooklyn bros. But yeah, so <laughs> uh, he. Uh, so Jeff Cobb is hitting the big time. Maybe he'll, uh, if if he goes to Ring of Honor, he'll probably do some shots in Japan as well. So here you go. He's moving on up to the east side. The athletes. So what is he going to so Mr. Athletic? Yeah. yeah, so we'll be seeing a lot more of Jeff Cobb on the big scene. Well, we're, we're oh, as, as, as big as he can be, I guess. Well, Stay with yeah. me now. Suplex party! <laughs> yep. What the hell? <laughs> Three does. Nice. Well, he can have a suplex party, then the Bucks can have a super kick party, and then Brian Zane can take people to Dick Kick City. Drop yeah, pop city tipping time. The hell. Yeah, Joey Ryan's gonna give people dick pucks. Oh my gosh, no. It's not bring him up ever. I'd rather hear about naked Midian. And I don't want to hear about naked Midian. Dude. Hey, the next time we guys the next time we get together, it's gonna to be all Joey Ryan because he's gonna be live, live, live here in the Bay Area next yeah, big, time. Big time wrestling, yep. Oh yay. Him and Simon Grimm, man, the asses are in a seat for that. Oh, wow. Greg and I are gonna give Greg and I are gonna give uh uh Hope Pops and we'll oh, be out there. Good <laughs> lord. You're gonna pull it out of your crotch and put it in your friend's mouth. And for that night only, please will be legalized. <laughs> Before we, uh, that's that's all the news I have from outside of WWE right now. Uh, the one, the one, well, there are a couple things I wanted to touch on. One of them's WWE related um, that I forgot in the WWE news, but we'll cover it here since there's not a whole lot of news from elsewhere. First thing, Greg, you just saw the uh, Fire Pro Wrestling. Uh, I can't remember the name, like the full name of the the game, but yeah, the new Fire Pro Wrestling. I have it right game. here. Okay, what is it? Yeah, you know what I'm pulling up right now. Okay, but oh, yeah, Fire Pro like, Wrestling World, isn't it? Yeah, World. Yeah, okay. um, yeah, it's like they merged with Japan. So yeah, well, well could, merge it with Japan. Yeah, because it was always uh, for those of you that don't know the Fire Pro Wrestling franchise. Uh, it was it's it's a game based in a wrestling game made in Japan, uh, kind of ported over to America, but they've never. Really, uh, they 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 don't have rights to any names of real wrestlers, so they always have like guys. You can tell who the hell they are. They have the same move set, the same exact look, the look, bro, um, and everything the look, else. Bro. <laughs> but they change the names so that they don't get sued. But this year, they're doing that, and since they now have an agreement with New Japan Pro Wrestling, they actually have the real names of a lot of the New Japan guys in their game. It's incredibly customizable. I mean, it's kind of fun in a way. It's more strategy than button mashing and stuff like that. So, I mean, it's it's really, um, you know, some people, that's their flavor. Other people might find it boring or whatever. The graphics are awful. That's the one thing. It looks like an 8-bit 
kind of deal, but you know, like a Super Nintendo game or something. But you know, it's there are a bunch of different match types and stuff like that. But it's I don't know it, the, the gameplay is so so. And you were talking about the price uh, tag that they just announced, right? Yeah, forty five dollars. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So. Hooray! By the way, it is not on Xbox. Uh, for all of you out there that do play the Xbox, it is only on PlayStation uh, as far as, like, uh, platforms go. So, there you go. This is why the PlayStation is better, bros. Whoa! No! According to a certain somebody that we know that works at game, He's Mr. GameStop. You know, Here it comes. He, he, you know, he and his store are outsell are personally helping the the Xbox One outsell PlayStation. So if he says it, <laughs> it is. He brings, oh. he brings Xbox virus to tears. Exactly because they he changed okay, their Jesus. life. Yeah, he changed their life. It is only. <laughs> I wish I was making this crap up. By the way. For those of you out there that want that wish to play Fire Pro Wrestling, it released for Microsoft Windows back December 18th of last year, and it is releasing for the PlayStation 4 on August 28th of this year. By the so. way, it's actually fifty dollars, but if you order if you pre-order it now, you get five bucks off. So yeah. Oh well, and no, there is no downloadable content and stuff. So what you get is what you get. So there's no extra add-on and blah blah blah, but it's like. For those of yep, you that screw off, you ain't getting my money. Yeah, I'm definitely buying it, but I'm gonna probably buy it, you know, like closer to Christmas, hoping that the price drops by, by that time. So I'll, I'll buy. Oh, no one buys it. Yeah, it's gonna drop quickly. Yeah. So we'll see. There are. I mean, they oh, have. They have all the new Japan marks. They're gonna buy it first day. Oh well, yeah. They're a laser price of anything. Well, the. I mean, they have. It, for instance, you know, you can play. So many different kinds of different matches. Like they have death matches, steel cage matches, barbed wire, landmine matches, MMA rules, stuff like that. So it's, and if you love creating things, this is your game uh, because it's very, cre- I mean, not that, you know, WWE is not because they've, WWE has drast- drastically stepped up their, their creation game. It's amazing. You can basically make a brand new game in the WWE uh, franchise. So, that's something, uh, but yeah. So the for those of you that are looking for an alternative, want some some other wrestling game besides WWE, I'm buying both. So I'll, I'll you know I'll have both options. And for the first time ever, um, since you know the next gen systems have come out since PlayStation, because I had PlayStation Two, I didn't have an Xbox, but I did buy 360, and I've been all place uh, Xbox since then. But for the first time in for a long time, I'm buying WWE for PlayStation 4. So this is a big this is a big deal for me cuz I I've never I, I I don't know how I'll be used to it on on PlayStation, but it seems like all the best creations. You creat- sold out. You sold out. <laughs> well, it seems like a lot of the best creations uh on community creations have been coming out on PlayStation the last few years. I I mean Oh, I'm, they have. Yeah. So, I don't know. But yeah, there's that. But, uh, yeah, last thing I wanted to touch on real quick before we move on to the list, bro, is San Diego Comic-Con is happening, and they Ringside Collectibles and WWE have revealed some brand new figures for those of you collectors out there or children at heart. Greg and I were very excited about this. I believe Ramon is as well. We get to, we get to pick yeah, out sir. some... We get to pick out some of well, our adult Bailey, toys. So, yeah, he's definitely in on this. Yeah. I get that first. <laughs> yeah, you, you're going to be first in line to pick up your new adult toy. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's, uh, it's happening. But the one, the, the, the toys I'm most excited about are the, the three pack of the Undisputed Era. I am super excited for that one. Not that there aren't other great ones, but. I thought you were most excited about the removable hands. Oh my gosh, that looks so annoying. Like, that's the one thing if I didn't like. I was like, you get two sets of hands now? Like, ugh. Just more crap for me to lose. You used to get weapons, now you get extra hands. <laughs> right, yeah. Get these hands. 
<laughs> Dude, it would be Get hilarious. It'd be hilarious if Braun Strowman's figure came with like three or four sets of hands and he's like, Get these hands. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but yeah, I don't Dude, know. There's like so many on here I want. Yeah. Man, the, like that undisputed era pack, the the three the three pack of the Shield Reunion, the Elite Authors of Pain, uh the nineteen ninety eight DX. Yep. Uh Oh man! The old school Drew, Dusty Rhodes, Alistair yeah. Black, yeah, Alistair Black, Elite Almas. There are two. Oh yeah, crap! There are two versions of Ruby Riot I saw. One with short hair, one with long hair, like Riot Squad and non Riot Squad. So that looks cool for all of you out there that collect. And the new Oscar looks awesome. She's got like two masks and her her headdress thing, and they've got the. Real fat- quick though, why does Paul Bear come with the WWF title? I didn't even notice that. I maybe that's when he was managing WWF champion Undertaker. I don't know. I, that's for the, uh, what a day. Yeah. <laughs> well, hey, they've put weirder titles with weirder people, man. Come on. It wasn't a five days. Something like that. No, it was like two days actually. Yeah, because didn't he lose it like on Tuesday? Yeah. Yeah, he lost it. He won it like Sunday, and then he lost it Tuesday in Texas, didn't he? Or am I? Th- Am I getting my timeline yeah. mixed up? Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah. And then, um, what was the other one? Um, oh, the, the 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 oddest one was Pat Patterson. And he comes with two heads. Yeah, that was hell out of left field. <laughs> yeah, we get a Pat Patterson figure, and like I said, he comes with two heads. Not two sets of hands, two heads. And that Bobby Lashley figure looks cool. My only question is, does he come with two heads? One with and one without the sweatband? Or are they one just... One with sharing? eyebrows, one without eyebrows. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I even said something to my buddy when we were watching a, um, Raw. I was like, dude, it looks like Lashley shaves his eyebrows. He's like, yeah, it does. It looks, it looks like he shaved them off and they regretted it and then like tried to draw them back on. <laughs> yeah, it was... Ugh. But yeah, if any, for any of you collectors out there or, like I said, just children at heart... They got some good options out there, uh, some great reveals. Definitely, you can go to the um, Ringside Collectibles Instagram or Twitter or Facebook or whatever the hell you use, or all three. You know, they've they've got them all on there. And a, a new classic Sting, too. Did you notice that one? Yeah, I want that entrance great Elias. I want entrance great Goldberg. Oh, yeah. Uh, and Goldberg is in his and black. And, of course, Ronda Rousey. Yeah, that one's cool. Uh, the Goldberg is the WCW version in his black trunks, and he comes with the big gold belt. I'm going to waste so much money this year. On toys alone. Hey, for once, you're not spending it on women. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, any uh, anything else you guys wanted to touch on before we get to uh, the list, bro? No, I touched on nothing for adult toys. We're good. Wow. Okay, uh, moving from away from that comment as quickly as humanly possible. Uh, which one of you bros is going to do the uh, do the list first? In the words of uh, Brother Ramon, in sync, it's going to be me. Nice. Wow. That's, um, that's got to be a first. That's, um, <laughs> yeah, let's never make an, were you inspired by Team Hell No, like, to make an in sync reference? Yep. <laughs> I linked it back to wrestling. Yes, of course. That's what that's what that was for. Exactly. Yeah. So, all right. It really wasn't. Let's hear your top ten sequels to wrestling matches, bro. I'm so excited to do Whoa. this, bro. This is my first list. I'm gonna list all over myself. Wow. Do you even know, list, bro? Uh, well, I figured we'd start you off here on the reboot of a re 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 reboot. Of uh, the podcast Wrestling Society, so yeah, we had we had a reboot. We had a tournament, bro, and Ramon came in second. Everybody's everybody <laughs> loses it. They get stripped of the titles, bro. And we have tournaments. But all right, go ahead. The list on the poll match, bro. <laughs> we're gonna list. We're gonna light the list on fire. <laughs> and then it's gone forever. <laughs> He's dead. He never. He can't right. come back, bro. Except for next week, he'll be here. Okay, the top of my list, number 10, is uh, John Cena versus CM Punk. I believe the third one you know, from Raw. Uh, from oh, yeah. Raw, February 25th, 2013. Yeah. And of course, I said that. That's the one Punk lost. 
that's that's the that's the forgotten one that was actually a really good raw match. Everybody talks about, I mean, yeah, you know, rightfully so, their Money in the Bank match, and they had I don't know how many friggin' encounters after that, but their Raw match was really good. And then there was a SummerSlam match, and then the, we tried to cash in Money in the Bank. So it's not like a fourth or fifth or whatever. Yeah. Um, number nine, I had uh, another Cena match. Uh, the rematch for WrestleMania 23 against Shawn Michaels on Raw, April 23rd, 2007. Like forty five minutes. Oh like, yeah. You know, almost the entire second hour. If I remember, it's because like Edge couldn't go to London or something. It was supposed to be like uh, two matches, but Michael and Cena go on for almost an hour. Man, if you need somebody to go for <laughs> to go almost an hour for you, call an HBK. <laughs> and apparently, um, there's a, yeah. There's a there's kind of a theme to my list. They yeah, all Cena. We got it. Yeah, they <laughs> wow. all Cena. Yes. Yeah, I was gonna say <laughs> they're like, we need somebody to go and uh, to, to go an hour on TV. Ric Flair just starts getting naked. I'll do it. Whoa! <laughs> I get his jacket. Yeah, they're like, put the clothes back on, uh, Rick. We're sending out Michaels. He's like, I'm God. I'm number God. Number eight. <laughs> <laughs> Fire me. I'm drop. Oh, I'm drop. What the hell? <laughs> Old Woo, I will not man, put an woo, in. ass, woo. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. Huh. <laughs> number eight, number eight. I have the Undertaker versus Kurt Angle. Uh, I think this is like you know, second of this feud, at least not overall. From uh, SmackDown, March third, two thousand six, the rematch from No Way Out, two thousand three. Now this match does end in a disqualification from Mark Henry's interference. But it, oh, oh no. Oh, I got was, to to take her and Henry WrestleMania. That was oh, that classic. Yeah, was that the time uh, what, Edge cashed in, or was it was it Edge? That was, like, that was later on. Okay, all right. Yeah, I was, this is uh, this is after uh, No Way Out. I think Kurt Angle's the the world champion when he faced Young Guy on SmackDown. Oh, okay. Uh, after okay. facing No Way Out, two thousand three. I remember that feud because wasn't that when he uh, when. Kurt Angle had a match at the Royal Rumble, and an Undertaker rode out on a chariot and like had lightning destroy the ring, like and that kind of kickstarted yeah. their feud. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. That was like one of the first times in a long time the Rumble wasn't the main event, and then it made sense on why it wasn't the main event. Yeah, because he destroyed the freaking ring. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think the next one on my list is the first time that I think this, the rematch was better than the first match, and it's debatable, but I got. Bret Hart versus Mr. Perfect from King of the Ring 93, the rematch from SummerSlam 91. Uh, oh, yeah. Angle well, was like perfect injured that. in that first, uh, perfect injured in that first match at SummerSlam. So I think the King of the Ring that people don't really talk about is actually the better match. Those two, ten w- times better, in my opinion. Was that the one... Yeah, but no one ever talks about that one. They only talk about SummerSlam. Was that the one uh, Bret was wrestling with the kayfabe, like, Hurt or broken hand, whatever, and he beats mm-hmm. and he beats uh, perfect with like a, a roll up out of nowhere. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, I remember that one. That they those two never had a bad match against each other, but yeah. My next one on my list is uh, it's actually the third match between these acts, I guess you can say, but it's the second in this series, and it's another one where the second match is better. And it's a TLC two for WrestleMania seventeen. Oh man, the Hardys, the Dudleys, and Edge and Christian. Man, why didn't I even think about that? You're right. Yeah, but like, yeah. man, that one yeah, didn't the, even cross my mind. The ladder match at sixteen, and then the first money. Uh, sorry, uh, first TLC and was uh, SummerSlam. Yeah, yep. And then TLC two uh, WrestleMania seventeen. I didn't even think about that one, but yeah, that's totally. Yeah, Greg and I were talking about that before. That's actually. Imagine it's actually like surprisingly kind of short. There's just so many moments in that. It just it seems like it's longer than it really is. Yeah, I know. Oh, real quick, uh, the backtrack just a little bit. It, what would have been funny is if you had the the Brett and Mr. Perfect match as your fourth, then it could have been four out of ten. <laughs> Boy, that, would been, that would have been the fourth <laughs> perfect. <laughs> oh, man. All right. But, number uh, five. Continue. Sorry. Number five on my list, I have... A uh, another Kurt Angle match this time on SmackDown, September eighteenth, two thousand three, against Brock Lesnar in the Iron Man match. Oh man, yeah, 
when Brock wins uh, five and falls to the floor when he like, beats the crap out of him with the chair, kind of similar to what happened in like, Sure Wheels, but gives him a couple of, uh, gives him a, a fall just to beat the crap out of him. Yeah. Yeah, they don't, the thing is, they don't abuse that in Iron Man matches, which I like. They they pull it out every once in a yeah. while. I know Giggity, I said pull it out, but anyway, they pull it out every. Uh, so long. <laughs> they pull it out every once in a while to you know, and it it feels special. They don't abuse the hell out of it. So yeah, that's I always like when it happens. So it makes sense. You just said uh, it was special they, when they pull out and they abuse it. That's all I heard. Anyway, what the on. hell? Um, I actually used to do that. Uh, I actually used to do they use that same strategy in video games too. Like I'd be like screw it. Like if I was down in the count. Wow. If I was like down in the count, I'd pull out a chair and I'd be like, screw this. And I'd just beat the hell out of whoever I was facing. And I'd get I a... just knocked the referee out and then do it. Or yeah, just that. like Irish hooked the referee harder than the ring post and he stays <laughs> out for like five minutes. Yeah, because he's made of glass. Um, <laughs> he explodes. <laughs> Number four. I have another Shawn Michaels match. This one's from No Mercy 2008 against Y2J in the ladder match, the rematch from. Unforgiving, the unsanctioned match. Oh yeah. And uh, Jericho wins the world title later in the night, and then those two face off for the world title in the ladder match. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, Jericho loses a tooth, and they're all busted up. Who? Jeez. Those two just like beat the hell out of each other. Yeah, mate. That's amazing. Yeah, Sean they had amazing That's song a- for the build up. It was just amazing all around. That whole feud is amazing. Jericho punches uh, Michaels' wife, like, in real life on accident. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because uh, Sean was actually talking to him on, like, a podcast. He was like, I've wrestled you enough to know that when you say, don't worry, I'll, I'll be careful, I, I should worry. <laughs> <laughs> That's why he said he was uh, mad, but Jericho not... A little, a little snug. Yeah, because he said he was, he was uh, like, upset, but not surprised when he accidentally socked his wife. Stupid Canadian. Wow. Yeah, Jericho doesn't want to throw a punch card in. It was a um, joke. That's what they all Denver, Jericho said about himself. He goes, some of you people call me a stupid Canadian. <laughs> I'm from like, Winnipeg, you idiot. That's a thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like, it's worse, not well, mine. At least, uh, uh, at, least my, uh, uh, well, at least, Shawn Michaels didn't call him a fat piece of crap and tell him to move in the middle of the match. <laughs> <laughs> Just trying to be out of my league. Um... <laughs> My my top three are all WrestleMania matches. All right. uh, number three is going to be a uh, rematch from Survivor Series '96, a submission match between Austin and Brett from WrestleMania 13. Oh yeah, that was actually one of my honorable mentions. Oh, I don't think yeah, like people. Uh, I always think they tend to forget that that was actually a rematch from you know the year before. Yeah, yeah. The that was uh... of course it's such an iconic moment of Austin. What is it, the, uh, what is it, uh, Greg, the, uh, blood from the stone, or what is it? Yeah, the blood kind on that shirt. Yeah, blood down the blade. Yeah. Uh, number two is actually 2A and 2B. Um, I have a personal favorite, but I went with both of them. Uh, Austin and Rock, two and three from WrestleMania 17 and 19. Uh, I'm biased towards WrestleMania 19's match because, I mean, that was my first WrestleMania I attended, so uh, and I'm always I'm a huge rock fan. The rock's my favorite wrestler of all time. So oh man! I finally got it. Uh, well, plus, I, Act One and Act Two they don't matter. The so, only one that matters, well, everyone remembers, is Act Three. Well, so wait a minute. For, forget about Rock Austin, whatever. You got to see the Undertaker take on A Train and Big Show, man. How <laughs> awesome was that? Yeah, because of Big Show. Uh, <laughs> he's got he's got that and the Big Show. Uh, to a match under his belt, man. He's lucky. Man, you just have good yeah, luck with the big show, bro. The originals versus the new thing. Let's not forget, let's not forget about Kane and Kali. Man, you got some classics, dude. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man, that's right up there with, with <laughs> Greg being at House of Horrors, man. <laughs> I know was there, too. <laughs> you know what's the worst part about the House of Horrors? In the, uh, in the uh, Shark Tank, that, that Titan Charm, that side of the I was on, is like cracked. So oh. you couldn't even see the entire match because it was like a big ass piece oh. just blacked out in the middle of the screen. I'm sorry, so that was a bad thing. I was I, gonna say, oh, lucky you. It's maybe even worse. Yeah, lucky you. I had to watch the whole damn thing. I was watching at home. 
Oh, yeah, my, I took my mother out of bed. You think I think I feel? Oh, that was, you should be ashamed. <laughs> You're a terrible son for that. <laughs> and uh, Roman lost. My, uh, number one on my list, bro. Is actually, not better than the <laughs> bro. See, this is my first time. I, I forgot the lingo, bros. Uh, anyway, number one on my list is not better than the original, but it's such a great match that it. It's got to be number one, and that's Shawn Michaels versus The Undertaker from WrestleMania 26. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you had it one, I had it two. Close enough, bro. But, yeah, so there you go. Another awesome list. We have have two down, one more to go, bros. Uh, When we come back from our break here, we are going to cover all news from the MMA world, which... I'm sure you two will have more to say about than I will because you actually watch the stuff. I kind of, I follow some of the news, but that's about it. This You're just fl- an average fan. Yeah, we get it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Another inside joke. Um, but uh, yeah, this first story should definitely interest Greg especially. So we'll leave it at that. And then after the MMA news. Well, I hope he isn't it. What? Well, I think that's- <laughs> uh, when we. When we come back, uh, we'll cover MMA news, and then we will end with Greg's List, bro, and then let you know about what's coming up next week. We'll be right back. Drama City Productions presets. Hey, it's Ben here, host of the Regular Stories Podcast, a podcast where I interview interesting people about their lives. These are not celebrities. They're not the elite. These are regular people, and these are their stories. You can follow us on Facebook at Regular Stories and on Instagram at Regular Stories. We are everywhere that you can get a podcast. We are on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, TuneIn, just about everywhere else. Look up Regular Stories Podcast. And we are back to talk all things from the MMA world, mostly UFC, but, you know, we have... One story from where MMA lives, Bellator MMA. <laughs> Should we open with the M- with the Bellator news? Because it's you know it's it's huge, 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 big oh, league boys, Bellator. Boys. We're gonna build a wall around the Bellator cage. Make UFC pay for it. <laughs> the Fertitas will pay for it. Cage. Exactly. A walled cage match, bro. It's brilliant. It's like a cage, and then you put a wall on top of it, bro. Then and you have to climb over the cage and then over the wall. And then there's going to be dogs, like rabid dogs, like all around between the wall and the cage. So it's like a dog kennel from hell match, bro. And then on top of the wall, it's on fire, bro. <laughs> and, and then... on top of that wall is another cage. <laughs> And on top of that cage, and hanging from the top of that cage, bro, is one of the fighters' moms, bro. It's huge. (laughs) It's going to be a mom on a cage, on a wall, dog kennel from hell match, bro. Inferno match, human torch match, bro. The only way to win is to climb up and send your mom away. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my gosh, we're stupid. But somehow I can see Russo <laughs> pitching all of this. Yeah, right? It's not that far off. All right, just to get the Bellator news out of the way real quick. Uh, Fedor Emelianenko will take on Shil Sonnen in the Bellator Grand Prix semifinal on October 13th. In Happy- 2018. <laughs> Happy Halloween! In Long-, it's Long Island, by the way. Oh, bro, in Long Island, bro? Where all the bros will be front row, bro. <laughs> uh, I wonder if the Long Island well, Ice Z will be there. Night, bro. <laughs> oh man, yeah. The Long Island Ice Z and his dad, who is clearly also a bro. Like, for all of you who have not had the pleasure of seeing Zack Ryder's father, he he might be a bigger bro than Zack is. Debatable. Yeah. Yeah, he's up there. All right, this is a story I was talking about. Bobby Neely there. That's going to be a fun fight. Yeah. It's going to be a freak show fight, but it's going to be fun. Man, see these two old men just swinging at each other. Yeah, pretty much. Oh, man. This is the story I was talking about will uh, probably interest Greg most of all. 
I, Ramon, I don't know I how much that was it. big. No, <laughs> that that you shut the hell up. That story didn't interest it anybody. But, um, yeah. So uh, this, I don't know how much of a big fan of this guy you are, Ramon, but uh, former UFC middleweight champion uh, Anderson Silva has accepted a one-year suspension from USADA retroactively beginning last November of 2017 after the drug testing organization found that the supplements Silva received from a Brazilian pharmacy were tainted. According to an USADA press release, Silva will be eligible to return as early as November 10th, and in a statement to Ariel Hawani via his team, Anderson says he intends to keep fighting. He can also get signed off and fight back, come back early. So hmm. I'm ecstatic because I'm hoping maybe he gets signed off and faces with Jesselson in two weeks. Mm. I would lose it. Yeah. There's no way that's going to happen. But I would lose he it. Anderson back would be, would be awesome because he needs that stealth back, bro. Yeah, well, we'll s- how, many, we'll s- how many defenses in the world did he have? 11. Oh, that's all right. No one's ever going to do that again. Well, We'll see if he's still he, got it, Demetrius bro. Demetrius Johnson did it, but he faced those little, little guys, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> one of them's the go, the other one's Anderson Silva. <laughs> hey, Mother of God. But yeah, we'll see if he's still got it. This is a proving ground. The last one didn't really count because he took the fight on short notice. So. Yeah, two days. Yeah, yeah, that's, that was yeah that's crazy. Uh, Vulcan Ozdemir. Is that how you say it? Ozdemir? Yeah, Ozdemir. Yeah, the uh, Vulcan? the Star Trek guy, yeah. Vulcan Ozdemir, <laughs> is is out of his UFC 227 fight against Alexander Gustafson with a broken news. Of course he is. I was looking forward to that fight. We're going to be there, and it's not going to happen. Why yeah. wouldn't it happen? Uh, they said they are searching. You know why, right? Because you're believe. going. Wow. You didn't believe. I'm going to say because of That's why. Well, they said they are currently searching for a replacement for Mr. Star Trek Vulcan guy. So, there you go. Yeah. Uh, speaking of Alexander Gustafson, he says he is willing to move up to heavyweight to fight Daniel Cormier. That'd be fun. Uh, I think everyone's trying to call Cormier out. Like, he's just some pushover. Yeah, as soon as he wins, I've ne- I haven't seen people call out a champion this much since, like, Connor. Like, this is crazy. Like, he, he won the belt, like, a, a couple weeks ago, and he's already had, like, three or four people saying, like, yeah, I'll take you on. Well, I'll bro down, bro. They're trying to get themselves over, bro. Hey, bro. sit down and quit trying to get yourself over, in the words of uh, <laughs> Justin Roberts, the immortal one, who, by the way, is hashtag all in. Justin Roberts is crap. <laughs> he's not wow. great. Um, Average announcer at best. He was okay. I I didn't mind him, but I just laughed that, like, there was that story about when uh, TJ Perkins was, like, enhancement talent, and he front-flipped over the top rope, and he was, and of all people, Justin Roberts was like, hey, sit down, quit trying to get yourself over. I was like, what the hell? (laughs) Yeah, because if there's one person you want to heed, yeah, it's like, if there's one person you want to heed the warning of, it's Justin Roberts. He's the easy on the match. Yeah. The Justin Roberts. Exactly. Alexa Grasso suffered a knee injury that forced her out of a high-profile fight with former Invicta FC champion Angela Hill this week. The fight was supposed to be contested on August 25th at UFC London in, or, excuse me, Lincoln in Nebraska. Grasso ruptured her LCL about 60% during a sparring session last Thursday in Guadalajara, uh, according to MMA Fighting. Don't care about either one of them, unfortunately. Yeah, I... Hope she gets better, though. Yeah, so there's another uh, fight that ain't gonna happen. Back to the UFC pops here. Uh, Muslim Salikov, I guess is how you say his name, was flagged by USADA for failing a drug test. The UFC released a statement announcing that the 34-year-old Silikov is facing a doping violation after an out-of-competition sample collected on June 7th, 2018 in Russia tested positive for banned substances. Wait a minute. A Russian athlete tested positive for doping? No way. <laughs> you got to knock me over with a feather. 
<laughs> Moving on. Send your letters to at Pod Red Society. <laughs> yeah. Make sure they're written in crayon and all of your R's are backwards. Just so I... Hey, listen, TJ, I, I heard the R, man. <laughs> oh, man. Man, Hulk Hogan heard the R, man. <laughs> hey, TJ, didn't, didn't you actually get your hands on that letter about uh, Mr. Roman Reigns? <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> yes, written in purple crayon. There you go. So tweet, tweet that out for all of the, uh, all the listeners. You'll have, you'd have to send that to me again. I've lost it. <laughs> How did you lose such gold? <laughs> Oh, how no. do you lose it? It's in your phone. Because I didn't save it. That's how. It was just in my messages, and it's, it's like messages again, but whatever. Yeah, yeah I'd, right. I'd have to scroll. But you literally like, have to delete it in order for it not to be saved. Yeah, well, I'd have to delete. scroll back through my messages for like how how long ago did you send that? Like no, three, you don't. Four weeks? You just click on the. I'll tell you about it later. No, you don't have to do that. I'll tell you about it later. Okay, yeah, because if, if you can show me a better way to do it, I I would appreciate it because I seriously like. Because there were a few times I sent you a pic or you sent me one, and it was like three weeks later, and I'm like, crap! I re- now I got to scroll back through all the messages, and that's a pain in the ass. Because you and I, so TJ doesn't know how to use a phone. News, let's go back to <laughs> I, I don't know how to use. <laughs> I don't know how to use Facebook Messenger. Apparently, uh, David Branch will face off with fellow middleweight contender Ronaldo Jacare Souza on. UFC 230 on November 30th at Madison Square Garden in New York City. Yes, Jacare still fights. <laughs> how old is he? He's up there. I don't know how old, though. Yeah. So there you go. That was the last UFC story I had, by the way. Um, ending on a low note, I guess. Did you have anything else MMA-related? You did it You did it backwards this week. Usually it's the UFC than everyone else. And you and El Bellator and I end on the low note. It's still ending on the low note. I know. <laughs> yep. It's just like start low, end low. That's my strategy, bro. I just I don't know. That, that was it. I really didn't have any blockbuster stories that to really cover. The biggest story I had, uh, or the two big stories I had, were the Anderson Silva one and the uh, the Vulcan uh, being out with a broken nose story. And then of course you know Gustafson saying he wants a piece of DC. It's coming for you, mother effer. <laughs> Other than that, I just <laughs> wasn't really else anything else to go over. Uh, did I miss anything though? Yay! What? Let's get to the list, bro. All right, yeah, it's uh, it's Greg's turn, bro. Let's uh, let's wrap this up here with uh, Greg's list of the top ten sequels to wrestling matches. Here, right, a bro, Ham Lincoln. Wow. <laughs> There it is. <laughs> you said it. The world Boom, popular. there it is. Was that, was that the one you said you weren't going to tell me? Nope. Oh, so I'm I'm still missing one? You are, Sam. Damn. You'll get it. <sighs> All right, now, uh, Baroque Lesnar, let's do this. What the hell? Number 10, uh, no one said this. I'm shocked. It said Bailey versus Sasha in the Iron Man match. That oh, was... I have a lot of legends. That was on my... Uh, my honorable mentions, yeah. Uh, a lot of these we've already said too. All right. There's, there's, I see two that we haven't said. Uh, I said nine, Cena Rock two. Hmm. Yeah. So, number eight, I said Rock Austin two. I thought that was the best of the trilogy. The mm. long, but go ahead. <laughs> what the hell. Uh, <laughs> number <laughs> seven, I said TLC two. Uh, I can't believe yeah. you left that one off. I'm I, shocked. Yeah, I don't quite, understand how I, I had to redo my uh-huh. list because there were quite a few that I had forgotten the first time around, and I was like, oh, man, how did I, uh, like, yeah, so. It's like I had left I off. about professional wrestling matches. <laughs> yeah, I'd left, uh, I'd left off the Usos versus New Day, and I was like, wait a minute, what the hell? So I had to go back and put that on. So, yeah. Number six, I said Bret Hart and Austin, WrestleMania 13. Hmm. Phenomenal match. Oh, yeah. That's phenomenal. Dave Meltzer said uh, that was one of the greatest matches of all time. So if Uncle Dave says it, it is. The greatest double switch. The greatest double switch in history. Yep. Yep. Crazy. Uh, number five, we said Undertaker and Triple H, Hell in a Cell. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Number four, I said Shawn Michaels and John Cena on Raw in London. Oh, yeah. 
Who does that crap when I tell you? Yeah. Uh, and the next two, no one said. I'm sure. I'll... Number three, I said the Shield versus Evolution at Payback 2014. Mm, I was thinking that oh, was nuts. Yeah. yeah. The, those were really a really good series of matches they had. I enjoy. I thoroughly enjoyed them. Yeah. A sleeper was the Shield and the White family too. That was nuts. That was a uh, I was thinking. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Number two. I said Styles versus Cena at SummerSlam 2016. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I, 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 see, I always think that's the first one. <laughs> it's like number three, I believe. Yeah. Uh, if you got the tag match, right? And then my number one was the same as yours. Shawn Michaels, Undertaker 2 at the Summer 26. Yeah. I had a feeling our number one would match up. It always been very clear how, how much those two matches were incredible. Yeah. Man, I can't believe neither neither one of you said either one of the Flair Steamboat matches. Like, seriously? I didn't think of that. Uh, I did think of that. I don't want to try another one. Well, I mean, good. Uh, I would have picked Nashville, by the way, just for the record. But. Yeah. Um. Well, one, I forget the event. Uh. Oh, well, here it is right here. Uh. Let's run through honorable mentions. The one that's, that you guys have not mentioned, I thought were super close to making it to my list. One of them, I said Batista versus Triple H, Hell in a Cell from Vengeance 2005. I had it, but I bumped it. Yeah, that was a I fantastic. One. Yeah, yeah, it was a fantastic one. Uh, also, I said Rey Mysterio versus Eddie Guerrero, WrestleMania 21. I mean, no, I did, I did think about that. Yeah, I thought, I thought that was. Just phenomenal. I mean, all of their matches were great, but that one especially. They had like 90 matches, so it's kind of hard to determine which one. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, Shawn Michaels versus Chris Jericho, the unsanctioned match from Unforgiven 2005. And I said uh, another one, Bret Hart versus Owen Hart, cage match from SummerSlam tw- uh, 1994. Oh, oh, how do I not have that? Yeah, that was fantastic. I love that match. Yep. Uh, John Cena versus Edge, uh, TLC, Unforgiven, two thousand six. In Toronto, right? That was epic. Yeah, that was the one where um, Edge ate it through a crap ton of tables. My these last Sorry, three. Like if Cena lost, he would have banished from Raw or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Uh, well, these last three, as a heads up, we're all Cena. Uh, next one, I know this one is like, how do you pick? Because there's like a, again, there's a million of them, but. John Cena versus Randy Orton, TLC, from TLC 2013. Uh, I thought that was a really good one. That's the one freaking Cena, like, eight table and, like, faced first to end the match. And then the last one, I don't know how many people will agree with me on this one, but I said John Cena versus JBL, I quit from Judgment Day 2005. Yeah, almost bleeding to death. Oh, I know. He lost buckets of blood. Both the scale. Yeah, right. So yeah, that is uh, that is it, and uh, that's a wrap up for this week's uh, this week's episode. Kyle and I will do a YouTube exclusive about what happened on Raw because since we were going live, and next week's top list is the top five wrestling talk shows. So there you go. Should be good, bro. Thank you guys for <laughs> thank you guys for joining me. <laughs> of course. And thank we, you. yep, thank you. thank you all for joining us on the reboot of the podcast Wrestling Society. We will see you next week. Later. Later. Adios, amigos. This has been a Drama City production.